welcome to America's Hottest Talk Line. Guys, hot ladies are waiting to talk to you. Vinegar <laughs> Syndrome! <laughs> Guys! There, she wrote my name like on the... She says, Yeehaw and Greg. Yeah, like she's straddling me and then XOXO. Yes, so... Uh, <laughs> Greg's got a girlfriend. It's got, it's got, that, it's got the Mighty Ducks guy. No! <laughs> yes, but no! He's not the Mighty Ducks guy! It's Emilio Estevez! Well, the Emilio! Brat Pack. Jesus Christ, he was a brat back before he was the Mighty... The Mighty Ducks is the end of his career! <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Get off my plane. I think Sony pays you a bunch of money to talk about all their steelbooks tonight. This is a movie I didn't think I'd like as much as I did. I know it was like really popular because it like won some Oscars and whatever, but um Jimmy does death. See? They actually <laughs> produced crew jackets. Like the movie never went into production. And then everybody asks about, you know, what's it like being a part of the movie that bombed, or are we still talking about that? I said, look, well, I'd much rather be the leader of a squad in a movie than be the lead of a movie in the summer of 87 that no one remembers what it was. Is anyone even there still? I don't even know. Yeah, we're doing it. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, okay. yeah, we're, yeah. I was, I was like, I know what's saying it. I was like, really is this a story? <laughs> just, just for instance, like, I mean, they've got all sorts of stuff. <laughs> you can never have enough physical media. <laughs> Filmed in front of a live studio audience. <laughs> in Burbank, California. <laughs> Hello and welcome, uh, fellow yes. followers, to the, yes, to the physical media show uh, on Fanzine, uh, my channel. I believe. Yes. Uh, <laughs> with me tonight, as always, are the crew and extraordinaire, well, at least me and Tom, and Rook. So how are you guys doing this evening? I'm the extra part. Shade. Extra. Shade was thrown. <laughs> we got to pick on the youngin'. None so thing. And I, I, you, you guys formed the Voltron. I'm like the extra piece that came in halfway through the season. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're the Atta kid that nobody wanted. The, well, the the, extra the, the, oh, we, we've got another one. All oh, right. Okay, sweet. Now we can punch him harder. All right. While we were sitting here waiting for you, I'm like, God, I miss rookie. I mean, the runner. Can we get runner back? <laughs> mm -hmm. But your oh, your supporting yeah. mind said rookie, so that's okay. Ah, uh, yeah, you got a point there. I fucked up <laughs> the joke. So fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> now you're uh, acting like runner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, if I act like runner, I'd bring on Whiplash. No, <laughs> yeah. no you'd have like fucking some Zack Snyder movie. Yeah, I swear, that's, I, that's I think for a Nolan film for the twelfth <laughs> time. It's like how many Nolan films are there? I swear, you seven, this is the four K. I only uh, brought on the Blu Ray before. It's like only only seven exist. We've talked about twenty five of them. That's right. <laughs> he manages to stretch it somehow. I know, and I swear, I think he slept with that Dawn of the Dead remake under his pillow for like a week. It's like every day for like slept, three weeks. He just that slept with Dawn of the Dead remake and not <laughs> gone any further than yeah. that. Makes sense to <laughs> me. He brought it on like three weeks in a row. It's just like I have it laying here. It's like yeah, sure you do. <laughs> He's just sitting there all day long going, Oh, my pretty little daughter to dad. Daughter to dad. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, just like that. <laughs> That's all right. I do the same thing to like my Godzilla movies. Yeah, I think we all have that one movie we like. I think I'm gonna watch this again. <laughs> and there's that, you know, one I'm like, going, Why can't you be a real movie instead of a bootleg? <laughs> why can't you be like your brothers why can't you <laughs> i hate you but i'm gonna watch you <laughs> well it's sad because it's i mean i'm just glad to have it because it's you know yeah I, yeah it's a bootleg and it doesn't look the greatest but where else am i going to get godzilla 1985 they just exactly. won't release it for some dumb reason yeah. probably you can always get godzilla 98 no problem yeah, well, everybody. We have four fucking copies <laughs> of that shit. <laughs> uh, but let's say hell, hell to the chat real quick, and then we'll get into all the news and dirty, gritty. Yeah, and there go, speaking of dirty, there goes your uh, monetization. I apologize. Yeah, well, the, every week, every week we get struck uh, with limited ads, and they because I'm the here. Because <laughs> I'm here. It's gotten really bad here lately. Um, 
I, I can't even, I cannot talk my B movies and boobies videos anymore. I can't do them. Like three of my biggest movie reviews. Well, about, I can see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know why, but like they were fine up until about a month ago and then they struck all of them. <laughs> now they're problematic. Yep. Now they're problematic. Oh, goodness gracious. Somebody talked about boobs. But <laughs> anyways, boobs. <laughs> boobs. let's get to the let's get to the chat here. We have random Brad. Welcome, random Brad. Brad, ha glad to have you here as well, as always. And Ace Hanlon says, I hear the Abyss 4K looks good. Is this true? Well, <laughs> let's say probably not. No, it's not. Sorry. <laughs> I are usually I mean, a sign of it probably looks better than the DVD. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's true. Um, what's up, Tim Hayes? Hell, glad to have you here as well. And as always, F Best Buy. And then we have Dan Blackroyd. Howdy to you. Glad to have you here, Dan, Dan Blackroyd, with us. Hollow filled, my dude. Hi, how are you this evening? Keeping us up all night as always. Uh, we have Christopher Barker. Hey, what's up? How you doing? Um, managed to pick up Twister in Game of Thrones Season 8 on Blu-ray. Well, good pickups for you. Uh, salute to you, Deleted Scenes. Glad to have you here. Um, and howdy, Doba Fett. Glad to have you in the chat. Hail to you, Brian Barth and Tyrell72. Glad to see you out there. Live long and prosper. And shut up, Jeremy. Yes, it's about time. It's rookie's fault. Rookie's fault. Uh, yeah, I, I was late this time. <laughs> yes, we were early. Fault. For yeah. the first time, I was late. Yeah. The old men were early as <laughs> old men usually are. So. Yep, we were, we were usually there. Earlier and on time. <laughs> be your time when we get to be about forty. I mean, I'm usually fifteen minutes early, but for once, I was a little late. Yes, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm, the young and young kids, mother. Uh, <laughs> but hell to you, Anthony Dr uh, Draven. Glad to have you here as well. And John Constantine, glad to catch you live. Glad to have you here with us live. I hope you enjoy the show. The uh, John Constantine. The John Constantine. Uh, watch it. The devil's looking for him. <laughs> yeah, shots fired. <laughs> and yeah, if you're, since if you're the real John Constantine, then ask William Friedkin why he fucked up the Exorcist. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's hilarious. No, the uh, Blu-ray is actually pretty better than the DVD or Blu-ray was, but uh, yeah, 4K is better. I mean, but uh, yeah, he still yeah. has to mess with that damn color timing. I don't know. all time. He likes to play with it, just like the rest of the boys. But at least he doesn't use so much of the other toys. Yeah, he, him. It's usually just the color timing. Like he likes to mess with that for some reason. <laughs> and, and a new sound mix. Yeah, he's just like, I don't like the way this color looks. Let's change it this way. <laughs> it should look more green. Or yeah. Blue, or purple. <laughs> uh, Friedkin. Um, but welcome, DJ Gravy Mix. He says first physical media show he's caught in months. Well, we're glad to have you wow. here and hope you enjoy the show. Uh, glad to have you here as always. <laughs> Jeez, we're here. <laughs> and then we have, uh, let's see. Hey, look, here's Midnight's Edge. I can't believe we got a star out in the chat. Midnight's Edge after dark. I cannot believe that. That motherfucker owes me money. Yeah, well, <laughs> I can't help you there. <laughs> uh, and who likes Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? I like turtles. <laughs> I mean, to answer Rad and Brad's answer, look, it's it's kind of a nuanced thing with the whole aliens, true lies, abyss. Because yeah, like true lies and and abyss have never been on Blu-ray before mm -hmm. legally. And uh, with aliens, I mean, considering from what we're hearing, the best we understand is that these are all coming from older scans, and they've been using an AI to upconvert it to 4K and clean it up. So. Yeah. I mean, I guess at the bit rate part of it and sound wise with aliens, that'd be the one that you kind of guess got to go like, which one do you really prefer? I mean, the original Blu-ray had a lot of Cameron's fucking with shit too. Mm -hmm. See, that's the thing is like, uh, that damned idealistic, uh, fool crusader, however he says his name, I apologize, but uh, yeah. I've talked to him a few times. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he, he, he's even pointed out that Cameron is always one to, to mess with shit on the home video releases and he always goes a little crazy like even even the old laser discs have a lot of uh filtering and stuff on them i guess too so you know it, it's just one of those things you got to just pick your poison i mean I, I guess some people are coping with it the best way they know how i, I would feel i would have more i would feel better about it or you know however you want to put it because there's a lot of people i respect that are making excuses for this shit mm-hmm 
And I would feel better if it was something like, you know, I spit on your grave or cannibal corpse or something, or yeah. not cannibal corpse, uh, cannibal Holocaust. Uh, Cause then it's like, yeah. Oh yeah, surely a movie that maybe they lost the negative of or something like that. Then I can understand like the Ben Blu-ray looks like ass. Cause that's from like a yeah. some 35 millimeter print. Cause they can't find the inner positive or the negative or whatever it is on that one. For instance, mm-hmm. like there use, maybe try it there, but I'm never a fan of what AI does to anything. I just yeah. soon see it, you know, warts and all yeah. and let it be. Um, that's why we I can, vinegar syndrome. <laughs> right. And, and I mean, look, a lot of people could do it on their own TV, what Cameron's doing on these discs in a lot of ways. So just <laughs> let them do it. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't yeah, just get you the want a smooth, waxy picture. Fuck. You know, turn on all those uh, motion smoothness and all that on your TV. There you go. Good to go. <laughs> and see, maybe that's the weirdest thing about these is it almost feels like he took them and he up converted them to 60 frames per second and then re down converted them back to 24. Frames. <laughs> like, oh, that's God. what it feels like in some places because it just looks weird. But at the end of the day, it's one of those things where it's like, I can. It, you know, I can accept it for now, but I feel really ripped off. And I think a lot of people should have the right to speak their minds on it because again, as I was saying, it's not like it's Hannibal Holocaust or cannibal Holocaust or some other little weird yeah. movie. They're fucking James Cameron movies. They can, I think they can pony up the money to do a new 4k scan of these movies. Right. That's problem. Number one, problem. Number two, quit using this AI crap. Cause that's it's, just, it makes everything look unnatural and not real. Yeah. And I'm with you. Some of the people defending these scans, I just, I don't get it. Cause I've seen them I, like you, I've seen them tear into other things. And then with this, all of a sudden they're like, well, this is the best they're ever going to be. When in rally, they're not, they could be so much better. <laughs> I'm just, just waiting. Go ahead. No, no, no I'm just, I'm just like, they're, like you said, they're just all AI upscaled and they look waxy. Maybe some look better than the others, but still, it's just. It's well, and I'm almost fun. convinced the abyss comes from the uh, scan from a few years back that was on cable that people are selling on the bootleg Blu-ray because somebody did a video comparison. It's like, yeah, some shots look much better and you get clearer detail on certain things. But is that really detail that was actually there? Or is that the AI creating shit is my question. And then yeah. secondly, like some shots are exactly the same as that other scan. So that tells me that's where they got it. That means they didn't even waste the time or the, the effort, put the effort in here. And that's what people are, I think are griping most about. And rightfully so is that if you're not going to put the effort in then what the fuck? Right. Like, I mean, I'll yeah. sit here and say certain things about certain ones and I can forgive certain things. Like I just joked about earlier with the exorcist. Like, yeah, the exorcist mm-hmm. on 4k Blu-ray for all its faults looks better than the movie ever has and i guarantee you somebody out there there i've already heard rumors that people are working on it where they're going to be doing 4k scans of aliens and the abyss and true lies just like they did with the yeah, star yeah. wars films the fan so community. we'll see how good those look and those are from like second or third generation dupes usually so like we'll yeah. see like because to me like yeah does the 4k scans of star wars and jedi and stuff like that look as good as from the negative no but they look better than the ones we do have from the negative right now because george lucas has scrubbed them so bad mm-hmm. they look sterile as fuck they look like they're come straight out of a doctor's office <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one i like that <laughs> but uh just, you know i agree i agree yeah but yeah but we do have some announcements and stuff so yeah, i don't know if you go. want to get rolling through let's those go, um, let's get into the what we got coming we got Arrow announcing Madman for six twenty four, uh, so we got that coming up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they got a couple. I, know, of I wonder. Like, oh, I'm uh-huh. sorry, I didn't mean to cut you. I was going to say I was wondering if that's the same scan as Vinegar Syndrome because some Vinegar Syndrome already released Madman on four K. Probably. So. But I don't know what. Uh, well, knowing Arrow, they probably won't do much, to, if anything, to it. Like, it probably look almost the same. Yeah. Um, and then we got one called Within and with Nail and I. I've never heard of it, but also coming from Arrow. Uh, let's see here. Dances with Wolves is rumored for 4K. No surprise there. I heard that was getting one. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a rumor. Keep in mind. Uh, be curious to see who gets that one, if it's fuck Shout Factory or not. <laughs> well, there is some Shout Factory. I was just going to say, and that leads us into some <laughs> Shout Factory titles, if you want to yes. go over those real quick. Yes. I, we are getting RoboCop 2 
in 4K. Shout Factory. <laughs> Matinee in 4K. And oh, I got to remember the last one. I don't remember the last one. I got to find it real quick. What was the last one? Um, Robocop remake. Oh, yeah. The Robocop remake, which I'm not. People thought that was an April Fool's joke. <laughs> Did you <laughs> see like, that? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> No, I did see people say it's like I didn't even know they announced them until you was like you dropped in the chat like fuck shell factory and I was like what's going on, <laughs> so I didn't even see Robocop it. two. That's what the fuck's going on, you dirty <laughs> bastards. But all right, you know what? Guess what? Fuck you, shell factory. My buddy already ordered it for me, so piss on you. I got the big <laughs> shot coming. I missed out on the the only one I missed out on was the uh, uh, clowns one. So if anybody hears oh, this yeah, and wants to part with too. any of their extra stuff, let me know. I'll definitely possibly buy it, but. Uh, as long as you're not going to rip me off but <laughs> <laughs> or if anybody got an extra one because i didn't get the big pack and i'm pissed i wanted the big pack yeah uh, but yeah. yeah but anyways but yeah. i think that was the the big three they announced yeah, yeah. i think that was the big three i, I think there's one more it was a blu-ray I, yeah but i don't I remember, remember what, what it was it was nothing special i don't think um uh, and then this is something oh, i knew species about two on 4k species what was two it species two that's the other one species yeah. two yeah um this is something I knew about last week, and I can't believe I forgot to bring it up. Blade 2 and 3. Mm-hmm. I knew about those already last week, and those are coming. And then uh, uh, What's-His-Face, Guillermo del Toro, had confirmed it as well. that He had worked on uh, the scan of Part 2. Yes. So there you go. Yeah, he said also he has Mimic. He's working on the 4K of Mimic. Which I uh, believe was announced and then didn't it get delayed for that very reason or something like that? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. Yes, yes. So I think that was one from Shout Buck factory it's, but it's like you said like how you predict it's like they sat Guillermo del Toro down and he's doing like all of his movies yep like you said they go through directors and so he's going blade 2 he's doing mimic he's doing um what whatever else you said <laughs> Can't crimson peak them, which i think also just recently peak, yeah. got announced so that'll yeah. probably be the first one that comes out i yeah. think yeah and i think shout had mimic or whatever announced but yeah yeah um and then we get uh chinatown finally from mm-hmm. uh Paramount. Now they're claiming it's a new scan. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure on that because this thing's had a scan for since the last anniversary, so we'll see. Um, I've got it on digital, so in 4K. Um, and I, yeah, we need a book check. Yeah, I'm gonna have to make that now. I just saw that. And I, was uh, like, I don't want you getting in that. trouble with them. I'm oh no, I got one. an F Best Buy uh, emoji, so I True. can make an F Shell Factory emoji. No problem. Yeah, well, we have to retire the F Best Buy. Yeah, we'll have to because the Best Buy. Should, F Best Buy, they're gone now. So we go to F Shell Factory now. <laughs> You're dead to R- us. RIP Best Buy. RIP Best Buy. <laughs> but yeah, the cool part about uh, also when you buy the limited edition Chinatown 4K, uh, it comes with the two Jakes. So you don't have to bother oh. buying yeah. a sequel. Or if you're somebody who's not a huge fan, but you take it for free, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, Let's see what else was there. Of course, we all know about the delay of seven. I think that's getting pushed off till next year. Yeah, Which I'm kind of not surprised because I think next year would be the anniversary anyway because I think it came out in 95. Yeah. Um, And then we got April Fool's Day. Also got announced on April Fool's Day. Yeah, which people did actually think was an April Fool's From Day. Kino. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, VHS Massacre, I don't think there's a 4K of Dark City yet. Not, not yet. yet. I don't no. think. Okay, continue. <laughs> um, And then we got Jaws 3D and Jaws the Revenge, which Jaws 3D makes me scratch my head. We already got the 3D version of that. <laughs> what the hell good is a 4K version going to do us? But okay, I guess for those who want to watch it in 4K, yeah, well, and really yeah, see the bad even... effects. Which I'm um, surprised we're getting it in 4K because I really didn't think after the second one they were going to do the rest of them in 4K. But hey. I think they <laughs> scanned them then in 4K when they really, because those were later releases when they did the 3D version and stuff. So they're probably just, you know, releasing the 4K version. So I, I'm not expecting them to look as good as the first two. But yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, especially Jaws the Revenge, I'm curious to see how it looks. Because mm-hmm. um, that was filmed in Open 35, Matt, so we'll see. Yeah. Uh, Balboa and Rocky Balboa and Rocky 4, or 5, I mean, sorry, are coming out uh, as well, finally, as we've been hearing for a while now. And uh, as we kind of heard, misheard at first, or re- misreported, Rocky 5 is not getting a director's cut because the director's passed away. And not yeah. surprised, but Rocky, Rocky Balboa, for some reason, is. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah, did, did, I, I saw that too. I was like, hmm. It was rumored that he was doing it. So, And I'm curious how good that's going to look because I know that was shot on early DV cam. So we'll see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, otherwise, uh, let's see here. What else was there? Uh, there was a few more, I know. 
Uh, Ghoulies 2 was the big one I know we've been yes. talking about all day. Yes. Now, we mentioned this before, but this is actually not only a confirmation. It's coming July 9th, and we're getting the R-rated cut as well in 4K. So, I'm yes. excited for that. I'm excited for that. And I, I gotta bring I gotta bring this up real quick. Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, Ghoulies two, I gotta bring up the tweet here from. Uh, yeah. Look, they, look, you're right, Andre. Eric <laughs> 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 D. Wilkinson, who is works for MVD and oversees a lot of these, um, you know, scans and stuff. He says it looks amazing. Really, I promise. James Cameron did not approve these masters on this 4K disc. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is so great. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love. I love when them companies are smart like that. Just like when Kino put down people for saying, "Well, I'll wait for Criterion." They're like, "Good luck. We they will never get it because we own it." <laughs> so I love when they do. Never like gonna that. get it. Never gonna never get, get it. it. <laughs> that would have been funnier as if they posted. That. <laughs> <laughs> Little end vogue. Uh, Breakdown also got announced again for the 15th, 20th time. I don't remember now. <laughs> Kurt, Kurt Russell, Russell one. Maybe it'll come out one of these days. I was going to say, because they uh, they released it on Paramount Presents, and then it went out a print, and you can't get it again. So Was it in 4K at that time, or was it just a regular Blu-ray? It was just regular Blu-ray. Okay, that's why they're doing the 4K version now. Okay, I thought so. I was going to say, I thought it was too, but yeah. So I guess yeah. finally, even though it's been rumored for a while, but. All right. Well, I think that's everything. Unless I missed something, did I miss anything? Uh, I don't think so. I think that was about it. Uh, let me check real quick. Some of the stuff I have here. Uh, High crime is coming from Blue Underground. Uh, oh, La Femme Nikita. That was the other one. La Femme Nikita is coming. Yes, I uh, got a steel book for that actually. Nice. That got dropped, I believe, yesterday or today. And that's coming in June from Sony. It looks like. That should look pretty good. That's cool. Yeah, I, I think I think that's on. We so talked about Karate Kid last week. Yeah. 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 And uh, we brought up. Uh, see, I think we hit everything else already. Then, yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, I think that's it. Because uh, we got uh, American Gigolo last week too. We got right. Yeah, we did. I think we mentioned, mentioned American Gigolo. Yeah. yeah, and that's where I yeah we left off at. Yep. yep I think we're good. There you go. That's Blue there. Underground yeah. Ground is releasing High Crime, uh, 73. Yeah, looks like Italian yeah. film I never heard of. So, yeah, other than that. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Um, Brian Barth, uh, wrong, wrong one. He wants to know uh, what is the director's cut of Rocky Five? Uh, well, there's a Ooh, work yeah. print out there, actually, that's in really poor quality. They could have at least done the work print version in a better quality, but other than that, there's an alternate ending and a, and a bit different cut of it. Yeah, I think I so. It would have been cool to get the alternate cut, but yeah. yeah. Spoilers: yeah, so. Rocky dies at the end of the other cut. <laughs> yeah, I think I have actually seen some of that before. <laughs> yeah, it's out there on YouTube. Rocky Five was a mess all around. <laughs> It kind of is, but I have like a weird, I don't hate it nearly as much as most people do, but uh, I kind of like it because it was something different. Yeah. The last two movies, <laughs> three movies, you know, I was like, yeah. I, I, guess, I don't hate it, but it doesn't flow once you get into the, like, when you start watching, binging the series, and you get the one, two, three, and four, and then you get to five, and it kind of slows down a bit. And I, I don't hate it as much as most people either, but uh, I'm glad he did make Rocky Balboa to kind of, but. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know. <laughs> my mom won't watch Rocky Balboa. She goes, I don't know why I had to get rid of Adrian. <laughs> I don't like that aspect either. Me but, neither, I, me neither. but Sly yeah. said the reason was, and I understand why, mm -hmm. to a point. He's like, Well, if I had her in this one, she'd be doing the same thing she was doing in the last three. Yeah. yeah. Rocky, you're not gonna win. You're gonna get your head pummeled in. You know, like, <laughs> who wants to hear all that again? You know. <laughs> And I, I think he said once he got to the That's conclusion, when he maybe she no has uh, died, and then it helped really open up the story for him to make the story yeah. where he wanted it to go. But I mean, I get it, I get it, I get it. So yeah, um, yeah, it puts Rocky in a position. I, I understand it kind of like in in hindsight, like yeah, because it puts him in a position to where like what else does he got at this point? Mm -hmm. 
you know, I mean, at least if he had Adrian, he would it'd be stupid for him to fight. Yeah, he's got a kid, but his kid's kind of estranged from him. From him. Yeah, he, he's he got this restaurant. Yeah. But he's, yeah. But he's kind of been, you know, kind of, I'm sure his days have grown, you know, kind of monotonous at that point. So, like, yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, it was it was something he needed to do. He's just, yeah, it's something to just kick him back into it. <laughs> the movie was semi autobiographical in that respect, too, because the Rocky Balboa movie was the movie everybody told him he was never going to make or shouldn't make. And then, like, the movie kind of reflects that, you know, everybody telling her, you know, and he already got everybody in the movie telling Rocky he can't do it. Yeah, you can't do it. You're old. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But it was actually a really good movie, actually. I really do enjoy it. So uh, I don't think it's bad at all. Yeah. No, I'm curious to see what is this whole director's cuts about. Mm -hmm. That'd be interesting. Uh, Yeah. So there you go. Uh, Yeah, part five is one with uh, Tommy Morrison. Yeah. Which is yeah, because I mean his real life was yeah what happened reflective of what happened to him yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, all right well uh, since that's all the releases we got coming yeah. and I know guys you don't want to hear this but we all got two each tonight we didn't get a whole lot watched this week so um, but I still think we'll stretch it out as long yeah. as we can. I, th- I feel like I feel like with my pick we might actually talk about it for a little bit well maybe. go first then. Yeah, then what do you got? I watched a movie and I even watched You mean you watched a movie for the physical media show? (gasps) And special features. Oh Oh, my goodness. I watched me some old yeller. Old yeller. God damn darn. God damn dog. That there is a little funny. It's been, I haven't seen it since I was a kid. It felt like rewatching it uh, before we go on here. It was short enough and I can use enough to watch, even enough time to watch the special features. So I was like, okay, shoot get that puppy in again and see how it is still holds up of course uh Unintended. i've never heard i've never heard anybody <laughs> ever i've never heard anybody ever say that this film is bad before uh, or the book even apparently there's a book as well i've watched this feature so i know that now with it uh, <laughs> I, know <freaking> now. <laughs> I didn't know there was a book before but no there's a book before but now i know <laughs> now i'm aware uh, but yeah, freaking great. Uh, even the score is pretty good. I like the music with it. It's got a good tone with it. Uh, good kid actor and uh, the two kids. Yeah, they look familiar. I was like, they're in something else together, aren't they? They're in Swiss Family Robinson. They're apparently in like five or six movies together. I cannot uh, the, believe the he's seen like Swiss Family Robinson in this and some of the other movies we mentioned. He's like, never seen it. <laughs> you know, it's just, you know, some of them just, I don't know, were here in my house more and other ones weren't. So I, I, <laughs> I was you. able to see some. Well, but, this is a uh, prequel to Cujo. <laughs> oh, I guess so. I've heard of Cujo. I haven't seen Cujo, but uh, I know it's like the savage killing dog pretty much. But this was a two disc one. Uh, the DVD release was 2005. I've not seen Savage Sam, which apparently, as it Neither says, I, actually. It, it says sequel yeah, to Old Yeller, but I've never heard anyone ever talk about it. So I assume it's just one I didn't of those. Even know it existed. Eh, eh. <laughs> Yeah, which is why I, I think they put it on a two disker because it's like who's gonna yeah, just go out and I don't buy even think they have it on Blu ray because I have the yellow yeah. old old yellow Blu ray, but yeah, I don't think it has the other uh, movie with it. Yeah, it's apparently you know it takes place with the two boys uh, from before and they have a different dog, a new one, and uh, goes on new adventures, I guess. And same whatever. actors or different actors? It's the same actors, the two kids, anyway. I don't I know if the, the mo- I, I don't know if the mom's that. in it still, but the boys are anyway. Uh, or I don't know if the dad is as well, but uh, and I don't know if they have the other dog in there too because they had the you know his pup uh, at the end as well. <laughs> but it seems like it's a different dog they have entirely. I have not one. seen well, the original film but, since I was a kid. Yeah, me neither. But I would assume it's a different. I dog just got the Blu Ray. Considering what happens at the end of Old Yeller. <laughs> well, it, well, no, I meant like you know, cause, but at the end of Old Yeller, he also had like a little pup as well. But this is a different type, a different breed of dog. Is what I meant to say. Uh, for this one, I can't tell what type of dog this one is based on the picture, it's too small, but that's all good. Uh, yeah, watching the special features too, uh, it, it was interesting. So, like, watching the movie, the dog you know fights a bear, wrestles with a wolf, and you know, hogs and stuff, all these bunch of different animals that, that it you know wrestles with. And I'm like, that ain't no dude in a suit. If this is a dog and a bear, <laughs> this is a dog and a bear. And so oh, no, I back glad. then they just let shit happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Uh, so I'm assuming 1957, right? It was the the release of the 19. You're just lucky David Lynch didn't direct it. <laughs> well, but so the way that they describe it is that the bear is like trained to like with dogs. This is play. 
essentially. So it's not really doing any, you know, it might swipe at the David dog. David Lynch would have been like, you not... know what this scene is missing? A gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I mean, with the amount of animals in the movie, I wouldn't doubt that they would throw that in there for it to tussle with. That's what I'm saying. Point, You're just uh, lucky or they're lucky. I guess the animals are lucky, but yeah. 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 Uh, but I mean, it seems like, yeah, they picked the dog because it was like a big dog and they, did they, they said they slightly you know sweetened it for Disney a little bit so it's not like as sharp the, the dog in the book is a different dog apparently but this was like a big dog and you know even the little boy even rides on it for a little bit and it's like yeah that's probably, <laughs> like you know <laughs> I have never heard of the I mean maybe I have but I don't remember like yeah that's weird yeah well I, well, I don't know if they had the special features for this in any of the original ones this was a 2005 DVD. I don't even know if the Blu-ray I have like, carries yeah. over the special features. See, that's one thing oh. I complained about the yeah. Disney exclusive Blu-rays is they would not always carry over the special features at all. I've heard of David Lynch, Doug. I just, you know, I don't, <laughs> nothing specific comes to mind when you say David Lynch. I, I, when you, if you say directors, even ones I'm familiar with, it's, it's, I'm not going to go all their movies in my head or something or things they've done or things. They've, <laughs> it's that, that's like excess information that doesn't stick in my head. That's right now. Okay. <laughs> that's all right. But uh, you don't know no, who David this, Lynch this is. A, I said, I know who David Lynch is. I just don't oh. know. Like I, I know of the name and I'm crazy. sure if I saw him, I would recognize him. I just, you know, it's one of those. he looks like Steven. <laughs> now, you know what? He does kind of look like Steven. Yeah, Stephen. He, he even kind of sounds like him. Stephen can play David Lynch in a movie. Yeah. <laughs> can you believe it? It's Friday once again. Uh, but yes, I, oh, I do agree with you. Old Yeller is a classic. I have not seen it since I was a kid, but I do remember like people have been saying that. So I I did ball my eyes out at the end of that movie because that is it's a sad Try part. A movie. <laughs> yeah. It's like I don't think I've ever heard anybody say they have. Why did you bring this childhood drama back? <laughs> and well, in, in the behind the scenes, they talk about uh, they Disney wanted to sweeten up the ending and make it not you know make it more happy or whatever. And the uh, the guy who wrote the book for it, it's just like you know I'd rather they not. And they then they chose yeah we're just, all right we'll keep it yeah we'll keep it as it is and mm -hmm. as close as they can. I mean in the throughout the movie they they actually there's a lot of violence in terms of the dog gets in a scruff but you don't see any actual well, like, back then disney had balls right? but, but, like, but you I don't mean, but you also don't see the gore really you don't see no like, but when i mean they put some the shit in there and, like disney would yeah. be like yeah we got to have some excitement and stuff yeah yeah exactly but i mean the fact that they even, even show the dog like mm -hmm. injured you know as much as it was you don't see the actual wound that the that old that old dealer has after the hog well no you know, he was never going to show done. you gore but but, but yeah. still i mean the fact that you know you hear the dog barking and as, as he's fixing up his leg and then it stops and then he fixes like oh, i'm good and the hogs are leaving and he's like yeller oh shit like i gotta you know goes to the dog oh yeller no and it's like even though there's so many moments in this that are like damn damn this is this is some shit man <laughs> this is good this is, it's how just like it, did you cry it's just farm yeah, it's, it's just farm incidences with, with the animals that to them it's like that's just life on a farm and uh that, when i was a kid I didn't, I didn't understand some bits that were set up like them talking about they, they didn't say the word rabies so i didn't know that that's I knew I knew when he shot him. That's that's what that disease was that the dog had. But yep. I didn't know that they're setting up that earlier. Like yeah, there's a lot of this thing coming around here. Uh, you know they get all slobbery and wobbly. That's when you can tell. And sometimes you can't tell right away. But you know then they get real crazy and you just gotta yeah. gotta put them down and whatever. And it's like oh shoot okay. And that happens to their cow as well. That you know gets starts wobbling around and they're like oh no she should be fine. But no nope, oh. Nope. And it's showing the symptoms. Got to, got to shoot it. Well, now you, yeah. now you got to watch Cujo. You really got to watch Cujo now after watching the Old Yeller. Seriously, Cujo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, it'll flow, sort of flow together. You I mean, want to see that Cujo. fucking dog die? Yeah, like, yeah I guess so. Yeah, the opposite, the opposite intention. Is, with yeah, the, it's like, like the sort of the same but yeah. opposite. <laughs> yeah, but but like there's so many. Cujo like, is just... good therapy for y'all. <laughs> I, I guess. <laughs> Kids I mean, like, of... ah, they had to kill y'all. The... It's all right. The... It's all right. Sit down and watch Cujo, and then you'll <laughs> yeah. see why. The the Did little you want brother... that to happen. All right. <laughs> the, the little brother in this was told to never, never be still. 
uh, apparently with his direction. The little boy was told he's told to just always be moving around, always be doing things and catching stuff and whatever. And so he'd just come in with different stuff, and that was like just part of his character. And uh, they probably the scene kept where, him busy to keep him on point. I would imagine. I mean, that's probably part of it. But I mean, uh, the, he's just apparently like a little wild Tarzan, pretty much. It's well, certain kid kids just, like yeah, it's the easiest way to keep that. him on point is to give him some business to do. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, and half the things that happen in the film are because of the little boy getting into trouble, sort of like you know, he messes with a little bear cub for one. He's like, yeah, come on, come on. Uh, he does that in the Swiss Family Robinson also. He's just always wrangling in animals, trying to, I caught an elephant, <laughs> I caught a tiger, I'm doing this. And it's just like, <laughs> geez, look at uh, Funny. But no, it, it's, the, the movie is so, it, it's a lot better than I would have given it credit for when I was younger. And when you're younger, you're like, oh, it's so sad. And no, oh, the dog is great and everything. But there's so many, like, you know, just good little moments throughout the film. It's, it has good setup with it. It's the boy becoming a man. It's the, a lot of, a lot of stuff story. in here. That's a lot of stuff in here. That's good. And at the end, you know, when he when the dad finally returns and he's like, uh, "Dad comes over to him, yeah, your mom told me what happened," and just, did, so just telling him about how well, yeah, it's kind of what happens in life, and you got you can't forget. It. He said, you know, you just got to forget about it and move on. And he's like, well, "How can you forget that?" And he's like, "Well, okay, that's not what I mean, but you know, bad stuff will happen. You get you can't spend your whole life worried about this stuff. This is this will happen." And this was the, that boy's first experience with it, I guess, being that close, forming the bond and having to put it down. So that was, uh, that was yeah. good. It, it, it seems like one of those timeless ones that you can, like, I don't know when you can show this where they won't get it. You know? it's just but, one of but for movies. all I know, I'm wrong. And somebody in 10 years, some kid will be like, I don't get this. What, this stupid dog is running around yep. or something? I don't know. <laughs> to be honest, a lot of kids today, you never know what, they, what, they, what they've what they been raised on. But yeah, no, it's like Tom said, Disney has balls. They, they, you couldn't get Disney to make a movie like that today. You really could. Yeah, you probably couldn't. Uh, well, and, and apparently it'd be all about it. old Yeller's pronouns now. <laughs> Possibly, How do yeah. you call this dog uh, your property? And a old he? Yeller was born as a boy dog, yeah. but now <laughs> wants to be a girl dog. Now things are different. Look around <laughs> the world, pretty baby. You got the best song because yeah. that's when they'll start. But the uh, the author of the book, <laughs> the author of the book that made old Yeller. Uh, like comment he wrote them letters after they filmed it everything they did uh sorry i have no idea idea what what you guys are doing (laughs) the wrong dog the wrong sex and station i don't know sorry no (laughs) idea but the, the author of the book wrote them letters after the film was made and said that you know this was great you guys kept it to you kept it to the book as closely as you could you cut out things that made sense for what you could film and like really loved it as well. Like to have the yeah. author of the book really love the adaptation that well. Uh, the, really the, 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 cast, the, check. the cast said that like the, that Disney was like really trying their best to, uh, you know, keep this as good as they can rather than like nowadays where it's like, well, is it, a, is it important that they capture the story or yeah. what, you know, what's no, the like, important we part? We got this book. Let's so. do the movie, throw the book out and just write the movie. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> but that's where this seems like they were really trying to adapt it as best they could from the page. So, because it's like capturing the story, not just of uh, the author, but like that's from the author's like grandfather, Python stories down to his, his son, and so on. So it's like you know stories they have with their dogs. And so it's a yeah nice movie that way. So yeah, really yeah. really good. Still holds up. Uh, you could put that in any time uh, with kids, without kids, whatever. It's a uh, mm-hmm. It's a good watch still, I'd say. It is. Definitely. It's one of the only, like, three movies I've ever cried on, and so it's one of the three I've cried on yeah. <laughs> growing up. <laughs> Definitely. The other one was Debbie Does Dallas. and Yeah, uh, those tits were so... I mean, sorry. No. <laughs> well, you just got upset when it was over. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but it was uh, My Girl and uh, Of Mice and Men. Those like those three movies, like the three movies that I cried over, and then like, you hear people say, "You if you do cry at the Titanic, I'm watching Titanic. I'm like, I'm not even got a tear in my eye. I'm like, this is stupid." <laughs> so hey, what can you say? But Old Yeller is an all time classic, and I I have not seen that since I was a kid, and I've never seen the sequel, so I didn't even know yeah. there was a sequel. <laughs> I feel like that's what most people say. Old Yeller is the best. There's a sequel. Just everybody but yeah yeah so uh, there was that one nice good first pick there rook a uh, good one yeah i feel like doug will never be happy with anything i pick at this point but that's okay <laughs> <laughs> 
right. Uh, but I, think, I, I, think, I think they I think they want another Gremlins from me. They want they they seek this from me. You've got you've point, got to I watch think. Gremlins. They wanted TV. me to shit on Old Yeller is what I'm getting. I think. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh. That'll be have to be my next uh, emoji is like a gremlins emoji from gr gremlins to 10. What was your favorite? <laughs> what would you rate it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it was, uh, that's a good movie. That's a good pick. Um, yeah, that's exactly. Cujo is what happens if old yeller doesn't end the same. <laughs> that's exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, but any final ro words, Rook, and then we'll move. Uh, we'll go on, I guess. Uh, nope, that's that. All right, all right, good first pick. Seriously, um, Tom, to you if you're ready for your first pick. Uh, if you're up and ready, I don't know. He's not up and ready. He's not up and ready. <laughs> no. <Nope>. Five. <laughs> Four. Sorry, sorry. I thought I was unmuted there. I said, sure, why not? Um, <laughs> Go ahead. I wasn't sure. I didn't know. Yeah, I, I got into the whole. Uh, you know, I got back into my. Uh, Courtroom dramas because oh, yes. presents has released Primal Fear. Yes. I was one to pick that up. Um, and you have the Oscar nominated first performance of Edward Norton. You have Richard Gere doing his best Paul Newman. Um, and this is one of those movies where either I know I must have seen it when I was younger, or the Oscars and everything gave away all the twists. Mm -hmm. I called everything a mile away. I mean, I know at the time this came out, it wasn't like you know, norm for a lot of these movies to have these kind of twists without getting into spoilers, but uh, you know, it, it still didn't kind of hamper my viewing experience on this time out. But uh, no, it's still a good movie. It holds up pretty well. Uh, the 4K is a semi decent scan, I guess. I wouldn't say it's anything to write home about. I also think this is one that was scanned a, year, a couple of years back. If I'm not mistaken. It looks mm -hmm. all right, not yeah. great, but but all right, you know. For Paramount, so yeah. I would say for Paramount, it's probably decent enough. It's <laughs> best you're gonna get, yeah. <laughs> um, sadly, it only has the 5.1 mix, so it does not have a 2.0 mix, which I'm sure it did initially. But uh, then again, it came out in '96, so it might have always had a 5.1 mix. But yeah. just the same, you know. I like when they include all the sound mixes, and including the originals, because mm. uh, yeah. a lot of times the 5.1 mixes they did for. Home video are remixed versions anymore, or recalibrated and all that shit. So, yeah. mm -hmm. but I remember this movie. This is this is a really good movie. This is, I mean, if you don't figure it out right off the end, you'll. The, I don't want to spoil the ending for anybody who has never seen this because it's it's the ending. If you don't guess it, it's just like it's like whoa. Because you can see why Edward Edward Norton was nominated for an Oscar in this movie. It's a really it's a really fun, fascinating uh, court case, and uh, seeing how this uh, story evolves and how Richard, uh, what's his name, I forgot his name, but how he investigates how Richard like, Gear, yeah. yeah, how he investigates and where it leads him and uh, what he does. So it's a, it's a really it's a really good uh, courtroom thriller. It's, it really is. So <laughs> yeah, I, well, I just say. I, I, no, I just say he uh, he's doing his best Paul Newman because he reminded me of that Paul Newman movie. I oh yeah, we do yeah. <laughs> yeah, a couple weeks back. It's just like yeah, he's this hot shot lawyer who's a former DA and all that shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the only difference is Paul Newman's version is a drunk and a gambler, and this he's just a hot shot looking yeah. for headlines and shit. Yeah. There was supposed to be a sequel. I didn't know that. That would have been kind of interesting to see where it went for a sequel i don't know if it i don't know if it needed one maybe they realized they didn't after because the way it ends it's like it leaves you thinking and guessing a lot so <laughs> yeah, yeah it's uh, kind of disappointing now i mean i could have seen at the time it was like really like i said like if, if a million movies haven't done such similar twists and since then that it's just like and yeah. now it also kind of find it some bits of it a little unbelievable but I mean, at the same time, I mean, there's there's elements here that, that make it a really uh, decent enough film uh, to revisit, and I think the the 4K is not too badly priced. So. Nice, yeah, go well, for it. Yeah, um, yeah, Brian Bard, Edward Norton has that reputation, so that's pretty much why his he don't do a whole lot anymore because he, he has that difficult <laughs> reputation to work with and stuff. Um, but I did not know this. Apparently, the reason there was going to be sequel, as people are saying in the chat, is uh, it's a book series. There's, oh, I didn't know 
neither did I. It says oh, maybe I'll have to check it out. Three book series in the primal series. So, and Steven says Show of Evil was the sequel book. Mm. So, I did not even know this. So there didn't you go. Either. Yeah. Uh, but it, yeah, I <laughs> I was wanting to pick it up too because I hadn't seen that movie in such a long time, and I remember I remember really enjoying it when I watched it. So uh, yeah, I think the performances really holster the the movie together. And like I said, Norton sells the show. So well, and you've got uh, like uh, pre Fargo, what's her face uh, in it, and uh, oh yeah, uh, um, Francis McDermott. Yeah, you got uh, trying to remember the other women in the movie too, and I drawing a complete blank here laura linney is one of them and then uh god who was the other one in it because laura linney plays the da and then you got uh, oh alfred woody woodard she plays the judge it's like a really strong female yeah, cast in this they movie got a good cast in it yeah and there's the other chick too that's not listed here and i'm trying to remember who it was but like it, yeah anyway no it's more, uh, more tyranny. his assistant is that who I'm thinking of? His assistant, I think. No. She got brown she's, hair. She's the assistant chick. Is is that? Uh, she plays Naomi Chase. Chance. Might be the one I'm thinking of. I think that's either who, way. Yeah. It's a great cast overall, except for like Richard is really kind of like. He's the least like I've never been a huge Richard Gear fan. I don't think he's the greatest of actors. He's all right in certain roles, but like. This is probably one of his better performances, I guess. But I mean, it could have been ten times better as anybody else, you know. But uh, yeah. maybe it's more tyranny. I think that's as, as everybody keeps saying in chat. So more yeah. tyranny, which she's actually in the movie I'm going to bring up later. <laughs> so I, she's been in a lot of shit. So like, I, I'm trying yeah. to. I, I think that's who it was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Richard Gere. Just he's he's. Jesus he gets outshined by just about everybody else in this movie. That's the problem. I think it, I think he had the luck of this fortune of being attractive to women and the people around him tend to be really great actors. No, I know so Francis McDermott. Up. I already brought her up. I'm talking about his assistant. Francis McDermott played the doctor. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's more tyranny is what everybody was what I think. Yeah, I think that's who it is I'm thinking yeah. of because she was yeah. also in um, well, it might be the movie you're thinking of or something else. I'm trying to remember now. I don't yeah yeah yep uh but it is uh he's yeah like i'm with you i don't think uh, uh richard gear is all that great but i think most of the time the movies in the cast bolstered him up <laughs> but he always is outshined by him so yeah he was just uh, fortunate enough to be in some decent movies um but yeah i haven't seen primal fear in forever i was going to pick that up this uh weekend or something like that before and i completely I was kind of surprised how gory the the murder is right i was unexpected but uh yeah yeah, yeah. again uh, the ending i kind of have mixed emotions about so like but i think most people enjoy it yeah yeah i mean it comes at you yeah i mean like i said if 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 you're not into these type of movies or like have seen a lot of courtroom dramas and stuff like you mentioned you may not see the ending coming so it may shock you a lot, and then if you if you're into it and you know it and you kind of see it coming, so I think it's uh, it really depends on, you know, how you truly feel by the end of the movie, whether you like it or don't like it. But it is it's a pretty solid movie though, as far as I'm concerned. Oh yeah, the whole thing rests on uh, Norton's performance for sure. Mm -hmm. And he he delivers. <laughs> it was like they like they said pre ego Norton, so he was actually pretty good <laughs> before then. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, so any any good things in a way? Special features on it? I didn't check into the special features, um, but it looks like on the Blu-ray you got a new filmmaker focus, the executive producer commentary from the old Blu-ray. Um, primal fear of the final verdict primal field star witness so like a few in another psychology of guilt so it looks like a couple of featurettes and maybe an epk uh, in the trailer and stuff so not a bad not a bad set but uh nothing nothing at all really on the 4k blu-ray as usual mm -hmm. which i i don't like that but hey it is what it is yeah i mean that's what they do i mean like we've known now the studios they're not going to pay for the special features or whatever to 
to be transferred over or whatever. So <laughs> that's how they do it nowadays. Um, all right. Well, I guess uh, we'll move on to me if that's if there's anything else. Yeah. All right. Oh, we got a runner sighting in the chat. Oh, look, a runner. Go back and watch the beginning of the show, Runner. <laughs> <laughs> what is that, Rook? So we got a runner in the wild. Yeah, we got a runner in the wild. <laughs> we got a runner. We got a runner. Normally, oh. the species likes to roam around at Best Buy, but since the territory has been taken down, we've got to find <laughs> a new place to live. <laughs> nice. Um, he stands outside going, steel books. <laughs> Steel books. Steel books. Steel books. This is the mating like, call. He oh, enjoys those uh, Zack Snyder movies. <laughs> yep, he likes the Snyder, We Flash, and Don't Breathe. Those are the three movies he watch. We may actually trap him with a copy of Zack Snyder's Justice League. <laughs> it's all right. It's good. Yep, you'll be nice and uh, out of sleep there. <laughs> oh. Okay, I guess we'll move on to me. I don't, I doubt Ruck has seen this. Tom, I don't know if you've got a chance to watch this one yet, but um, I actually found me an A24 movie I like. Believe it or not. Probably not. <laughs> uh, it's the Iron Claw. Oh, I haven't got a chance to check that one out yet. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, I've heard like it's really, it. really good. Yeah. This is a really, really good movie, especially. Especially as a, uh, got a kid who grew up watching wrestling and stuff, and uh, knows a little bit about the Von Erichs and their family, this was actually a pretty solid movie. Uh, and I surprised it's an A twenty four movie, which I was I never thought I would like. But uh, yeah, as far as far as the story goes, it's the story of the Von Erich wrestling family, who is one of the famous wrestling families in the history of professional wrestling, um, and sadly. Every there, there were like six, seven brothers, uh, and they all died but one, all but one. Uh, and it's the story of Kevin Von Erich. And uh, you so know, so many of them died, they actually leave a couple out of the movie. Yeah, they leave one brother, yeah, they leave one brother out of the movie, Chris Von Erich, because they said his story was just too damn sad. And then what they put you through by the end of the movie, <laughs> they just couldn't do it. They just couldn't. And I know some people got upset over that because, uh, especially because they were huge in Texas, these guys were like rock stars Beatles in Texas because that's where they're from and a lot of some of those people and those wrestling fans got mad that they left out the final brother <laughs> but his story is fucking really bad really sad and it's just by the time it gets to the end of the movie you don't want to know you don't want to hear anymore <laughs> to be honest with you <laughs> so um the only real problems uh complaints I would have with this movie is um the height of Carrie Von Erich, like even that, because like him and Zach Efron are short guys, and the Von Erichs were all well over six four. Um, but Zach Efron put on enough muscle where it doesn't matter how tall he is, you buy him as Car uh, as Kevin Von Erich. But Carrie Von Erich, who was actually in the WWF, the WWE, he tag teamed with Ultimate Warrior. He was called like the Texas Tornado, or whatever. He was like six five maybe and jeremy allen white plays him he kind of looks like him but he's like when they're showing him and he's shorter than the dad and shorter than zach efron and i'm like that's not that's not carrie von eric but he everybody in this movie is part that as it goes along you really buy into them as they're who they say they are regardless of the height the other problem i had was with the guy that was playing rick flair the wrestler rick flair sucked like every, everybody in the movie, he came across like he was a cosplayer at uh, Comic Con. He just did not, he did not nail Ric Flair at all. And if you know anything about Ric Flair, it, when if you see him and then see this guy, it it does not work. It does not work at all. But yeah, this story, this movie is it's speaking of more, more tyranny. She plays their mom. Uh, this is this is a story of what um, you know bad parenting and stuff can do to you because. Um, the dad was a wrestler, and he always thought he deserved the belt, the NWA belt, which is what they all fought for back in the day. And he never really, never really got there. So he sort of started his own wrestling because back in the day, wrestling was separated by territories. It wasn't like one company, WWF, who runs all. It was all territories. And he had the WCCW World Championship, World Class Championship Wrestling, and he built that. He owned it, and he raised his boys in it. And basically, he pushed his boys to be to get the belt. 
because he always wanted the belt and he pushed them into this and he, and their mom was always about God and trying to keep them with God and everything. And so like they were raised a certain way and um, it just basically their dad burned them all. Uh, the first brother, their little, the oldest brother, when he was like seven, he stepped on this thing and got electrocuted and died. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then there, uh, then the third, the third brother, because uh, Kevin Von Erich, who Zach Efron plays, is the second oldest. He's the one that survived. So the brother after him ended up dying in Japan from some kind, like a bowel blockage type thing. And then uh, the brother after that got injured in the ring and went into a coma. And when he came out, he was never really the same. So he committed. So he off himself. I don't, yeah, I got to be careful what I say on YouTube. And then the Carrie Von Eric, um, he did the same thing. He offed himself. Uh, and then the last brother, you know, which they don't go into, he's not in the movie, but yeah. <laughs> so it really gets you by the time of the movie. And what it's like, really, like what Zach Efron delivers in this movie. And when he gets to the end of the movie and stuff, it's just like, you're like, Talk about wanting to be in a blubbering mess <laughs> trying it out a movie, especially if you're like a wrestling fan. So it was it was a good watch. It was a good movie. It was a good solid movie. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Um yeah, Zach Efron could have been He-Man the way he looks in that movie. He looks like he, he literally looks like He-Man. Uh how big he got in the haircut they have. Um yeah, the last couple scenes gets you. Um yeah, the Harley Race, the guy that played Harley Race was great. The Ric Flair was awful. Um yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I grew up watching a lot of these guys because uh, my my family was huge into wrestling. So we watched like the WCW, the WWF, and uh, we seen a little bit of like the Jim Crockett era wrestling and stuff. My dad always liked watching that stuff. And uh, but yeah, if you've never seen it, I do recommend it. it is, it's a good movie, but it is it can be a tough watch, uh, especially by the gets to the end of the movie because of uh, uh, the movie. It, it is though I will say uh, it is a little indie. It's like an indie movie, so there's certain scenes that linger a little too long and stuff, like an independent film would and stuff, you know. So, but other than that, it's a, it's pretty solid and a, it 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 gets you, it gets you. And uh, I don't even think you have to be a wrestling fan to understand what's going on in this movie. So, uh, yeah, there you guys go. <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> and it, it, it's pretty interesting though because like the the Kevin Von Erich is back out front plays. Um, all he wanted was his family. He just wanted to hang out with his brothers, you know, have a good time. He's a good old Texas boy, right? He, he loved his family. And uh, sadly, he's the, has no more brothers. But he now lives in Hawaii with his wife, who he's been married to the whole time. They have four kids and 13 grandkids, and they all live together on the, the giant farm they own in Hawaii. So uh, he sort of has a happy ending for all this shit and crap and horrible things that happened to his family. <laughs> so, I mean, he doesn't have his brothers anymore, but he does, he's sort of like, you know, he's living his best life right now. Uh, <laughs> but there you go. There you guys have it. I, I do recommend a movie. It's, it's like one of the first A24 movies that I've ever liked. I've ever liked. Cause usually they're boring, crappy movies to me. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, when you said it was an A24, I was like, don't be like a Midsummer sequel. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even watch Midsummer to begin with. <laughs> yeah. Yes, this is true. His sons uh, do wrestle in MLW, and they were actually on. Summer comes end summer. <laughs> yeah, end <in> summer. <laughs> the end summer. Before yeah. you see beginning of summer. <laughs> <laughs> It's a prequel to Midsummer. It's the pre-summer called Spring. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, I do recommend it. I do think if you're uh, if you're a fan of uh like if you can handle this cuz it it's a pretty tough watch. It's a pretty tough watch uh by the time it gets to the end of the movie. But it's the performances are great. I mean, even 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 if these guys are not 6 foot, especially Zac Efron, Jeremy Allen White a little bit but knowing I've seen Kerry Von Erich and knowing how tall he is, I kind of can't get over the fact how short he is in the movie. But Zach Efron, you buy 100%. You would think he is over six, six foot tall, even though he's only like 5'8". <laughs> so it's, it's, it's pretty solid. It's pretty solid. Um, but there you guys have it. There's my first movie of the night. Uh, so, Rook, if you're ready for your second movie, we'll move on to you. All right, sounds good. I've got Hellboy. 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 So, uh, Hellboy is one of those 
comic once when I was younger that I never knew anything about the comics as well, but I love the movie. And even to this day, I still like the style that they have with it. Uh, the use of their practical and special effects, I think, are a good kind of mix of the time a little bit. The weapons they even have, the gun for him specifically, oddly fun, I guess, the way they go about it. It's it's, it's generic. A lot, a lot of the film is pretty generic with some stuff it does, but... I don't know, you know, when Yahtzees come up with, uh, they're always a great tool for stories with anything. They have a secret cult, uh, you know, might as well be, you know, the uh, Hydra practically, but a different because it's not Marvel, right? So this is this Dark Horse or is this like just a different thing altogether? Um, I don't uh, know. It might be Dark comics Horse. Or something, but yeah, there's a little group trying to do some stuff. Accidentally have the eight demon man. Yeah, it's Dark Horse Come comics. around, yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, I just the the like his type of character having him be one who's pretty much a demon, essentially, just you know trying to shave his horns, blend in with society, <laughs> loves cats, uh, just a funny concept, uh, pretty fun. He's got a you know very, yeah. You know, how would you describe the girl? Uh, I, 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 she's not gothic, but what's the what am I thinking of for? emo gothic he, i don't know i feel i feel like she's sort she's on the she's on that type of archetype but you know yeah dark quiet wants to be alone that kind of stuff then you got abe named after abe lincoln for some reason i forget why he's named abe lincoln i think he was like found somewhere around something related to abe lincoln i don't remember <laughs> but it's like okay that's abe you got abe lincoln <laughs> there essentially a little smart fish boy uh, in the first movie, the, the way that they presented it made it seem like, yeah, they're the private like shield, essentially, that you know takes things that go bump in the night. But they didn't show too many examples of it. But then in the second one, they show like in the beginning, there's like, oh, they have like regular agents handling like a tentacle monster and all these other things. And I'm like, oh, so there's like a shit ton of monsters in this world. Oh, I thought it was like no, the second one is few. awesome. Second one is awesome too. In fact, I probably enjoy the second one more, but there's still a lot that you get out of this one that's really good. Yeah, I love it. I like both. That, yeah. that does all right. And you know, I, out of anything, I really wish that this got like a trilogy to stuff. Well, they wanted to, but now uh, it's a little too late. So <laughs> yeah, they they gave up on all that, didn't they? Unfortunately. Well, the second one, the, well, the reason was the second one didn't make as much money as the first one. It kind of flopped. And so they never got the third one greenlit. So, yeah, that sucks. I mean, it would, like, I think I saw the second one in theaters and then I didn't, I didn't even know there was a first one. I was like, there's a first one? There's one of those ones again. Where I was like, you cracked me up. You're first, like, you always see the second the first one first. <laughs> like, well, because it was marketed as Hellboy, the gold. I don't know if it was marketed as Hellboy Army. 2 or if it was Hellboy, the golden army. And I was Hellboy, like, the golden army. this is a cool little thing. Okay. And then uh, it turns out, oh, then they have a, a first movie. I'm like, well, sign me up. That's like fun, though, because it's like, wow, I like I like this thing. And I didn't know about this thing before. And then, oh, there's more about it. Sweet. I can go look at that now. But. There's only the one. Yeah. Oh, you got a cover there or Blu-ray? Oh, for, gold, for number two. On these. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. Yeah, they're on 4K so, now, Rook. So yeah, that's good. Well, yeah. Well, I need to. Well, I definitely need to get uh, some upgrade ones because my uh, Hellboy two, I don't have a case. So, okay. Uh, okay. No wonder <laughs> you that's are. One, that's one that I want a case for, though, because I do like the movie. Uh, most of the ones I don't have cases for are ones I don't really care about. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Nice. Yep. That's the animated Body one. Fish. Hell yeah. We'll get the sequels off those, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I guess I, I don't have much to say about it right now. I didn't just rewatch it, but I picked it out because I do have it. I do enjoy it. It is fun. I like the Samuel creatures that are in there that he fights. Those are the, the, the way, you know, they want it looks practical enough and slimy, and gross and stuff. And it's got like a weird, weird arm thing. It looks like they took like a like a horrible Power Ranger monster, but then made it more rough and kind of like, OK, this thing could fight this big red guy in our movie. And, you know kind of cool with that concept there but uh yeah yeah that's pretty much all i gotta say about it and, you know it's a yeah, it's great i do nice i really good it. nice and good yeah, if, if when I, whenever you watch the second one i'll probably have a lot more to say about the thing as a whole because they really address more of him as a character in the second one 
Uh, that's good. But and that's just the theatrical cut too. That they have a director's cut out, by the way. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I also find the director's cut, but I didn't know they had more versions. See what happens when you upgrade. You get other yeah, sometimes, stuff. but sometimes, <laughs> sometimes apparently they don't have the special stuff that comes with them, though. Sometimes, so. sometimes they don't carry it over. Uh, yes, and yes, uh, as some of the people in chat, yes, Seth MacFarlane is in part two. He's the voice of the 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 guy they bring in to run it. That smoke in that suit or whatever I can't remember what he's called. And uh, yes, David Hyde Pierce does do the voice of Abe Sapien in the first movie. However, he does not do the voice in the second movie. Uh, the guy playing him, uh, the um, oh, what is his name? He's everywhere now. Uh, um, he does the voice. The, 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 the uh, Doug Jones. Yes, thank you, thank you. Doug Jones does the voice. He actually does a pretty good interpretation of David Hyde Pierce. So, but there you go. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, Runner says that they were two different studios. I don't know if he's referring to something else. No, the, the first uh, Hellboy and Hellboy 2, I believe they were two different studios. And uh, Brian Bart, that's because the second movie didn't do very well. It didn't do very well at the box office enough to warrant a third movie. They tried for years to get it made, and it just it never happened. And then they rebooted it. And I think they're actually rebooting it again, if I remember correctly. So, <laughs> I mean, I could understand why they'd want to because it, it is an interesting character for a superhero thing. But I feel like they they're looking at so many other so many other examples. They don't even know what to do anymore. And they like, I assume you could just adapt the character. It's if you if you can get the characters right, you'll have something interesting to watch. I assume, but they I, I feel like that's not how they think, right? They want to have the guaranteed numbers of some kind. Yeah, you got to have guaranteed numbers now to today's Hollywood. So if you don't have guaranteed numbers, you're no good. Yeah, the sequel was a little too expensive. Um, I have not seen 2019 Hellboy, but I've heard it's really bad. Well, it was I've really, seen, really I've bad. Seen it. I've, heard. I've, I've seen it. There's like a few things in it that are like noteworthy that are okay, but I don't even remember them. Most of it was pretty shit. Yes. Most yeah, from what shit. I heard, I have not seen it. I've heard it's really, really bad. <laughs> and it flopped, and I believe they were going to try to reboot it yet again. So, yeah, I feel like the actor who played him's not horrible. It's just like there's so much crap in the movie. There's by so much, I mean, there's just literally so much going on in the movie. And it's like, what? what is the focus? Is there any focus? And then, yeah, there's there's some there's some funky, weird shit that happens in the like final sequences. That's <laughs> very weird. Very weird. Very weird. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. What, 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 did, what did Doug mean by uh, the the Gary Busey thumbs up? What, what's that reference? Like? <laughs> he gave you the Gary Busey thumbs up. <laughs> what's just just a Gary Busey thumbs? Up? Is that from a movie? I don't, I don't know what movie that's from. That it's thumbs up is famous or something. I, I'm just it's going over my head again. Just I I don't know. It's going over your head again, really going over your head. <laughs> 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 I'm like I know who Gary Busey is, but I don't know what I don't know what that's referencing. Don't know what it's referencing. Tell with you, Doug. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> People were talking about Mila Jovovich. What was everybody talking about now? The Mila Jovovich is in the Hellboy um, remake. She's the bad girl. Oh right, right. By the way, that's. The Gary Busey thumbs up right there. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's all, like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like, he didn't do that in Lethal Weapon, as far as I know. Uh, not in the gingerbread man thing he was in. I don't know. <laughs> Talk about buttered sausage. Talk about buttered sausage, where it comes from, what it does. Why is it doing what it's doing? Get it out of my face. What about buttered, buttered, buttered sausage? That's not your jam. It's not your thing. You don't like it. It's not my jam. I don't buy jam. I buy honey, and I kiss it on the lips. <laughs> Kisses honey on the lips. All right. <laughs> uh, hail to the abuse. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I had to bring that up. But yeah, uh, no, I agree with you. Hellboy, the first two Hellboy movies are really, really good. I haven't seen them in a long time, but uh, they're really, really good movies. I, I do remember enjoying them. Ron Perlman, who plays Hellboy, he's not the greatest person in, in the real real life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he did but, a great uh, Hellboy. He is a really great Hellboy. He's really great. So I, I love the attitude with it because he's like, he's supposed to be like in a pretty, he's from the like, you know, from World War II era, essentially, but he's like in his twenties. Essentially, he's kind of he's immature as hell. He likes cats. He's like chocolate bars and smoking cigars and loves guns. And it's like, what the hell is this guy? <laughs> what is this character? <laughs> I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's a great character. Um, yeah. Yep, that's all I got <laughs> for that one. So you go. All right, uh, Tom, are you there? Are you back? Or uh, yeah. Okay, you ready for your next pick? Yeah, well, this is be my last pick of the night. Yeah, let's all the uh, Because <laughs> this is actually a two-parter in a 4K set, and I have the originals here as well. I have, oddly, a, a, a movie-only version of uh, Red 1 and uh, Red 2 here from the... And you got Red got 5? The, uh, Red 5? No. Uh, but I got the 4K <laughs> edition that just came out from uh, Lionsgate. Um, and so... Luckily, I got all the special features from the first film, but the Blu-rays are just the old releases that are been released before, whatever. Otherwise, though, um, but uh, so the new 4Ks. Honestly, if you already own them, <laughs> unless you really just want this cool case, they're up converts, so they don't look the greatest. Which is weird because um. it looks like the first one was shot on film, but then had an. Uh, digital inner positive um but the movies themselves are fun i mean they're blast the the one upgrade you do get on the 4k is it's got dolby atmos for a soundtrack on each of them um but no i mean they're fun films Uh, i think for the price you get both movies so it's not too bad like 25 or 30 bucks yeah it's like really cheap ain't it well decent enough yeah you own them or whatever yeah i've never seen red part two I've never, uh, I've I don't seen mind it. Yeah, it was good. It's not as good as the first one, but it's pretty good. I mean, it, the only thing Red Part Two has is it's got a little bit of too many characteritis. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Just way too many characters in it, trying to put in more old yeah, guys. Yeah, and they all end up deciding <laughs> to work together. It's like kind of one of those things. Like it's like, yeah. oh, okay, you got so many people the in here. Everybody the old lost the new cast. Ca- yeah. So yeah, I mean it, it has some fun moments and stuff, and it's not horrible, um, but but it's fun. Isn't Richard Dreyfuss in the second one? Is he in the second no, one? First, first, first one, first one, okay. Because I haven't seen, like I said, I've never seen the second one. I haven't seen the first one in a long, long time. So, <laughs> but I mean, I can I commend uh, Lionsgate for the still books they put out. Some a lot of times their scans are all right, and sometimes they're not. So <laughs> here's it, some. It, it, I don't it, have that problem deleted scenes with Lionsgate thus far, but I have with uh Shout and some Kino Lorber titles. But I've noticed I've had to wipe off a lot of movies just because of that, because like a little speck of dust on a 4K will cause issues. No, yeah. like way before a standard Blu-ray. Things, got things a, aren't meant to last nowadays, huh? Well, no, it's got to focus. The lens has to focus on a much smaller area. Mm. So if there's something on it, it's not gonna fix itself as quickly or easily as with a yeah. blu-ray so it has a lot more data to read so it's kind of a yeah, yeah. you just got to once in a while you just got to make sure you have like a soft cloth laying by and if mm-hmm. just kind of give it a quick wipe just to make sure all the dust and stuff or whatever's off there i've had to do that a few times with a couple of 4ks get out the can of air and spray out the uh, the player and then wipe it off a little bit and put yeah it i just got a fuzzy <laughs> soft cloth next to my player where i just whenever i'm watching a new movie if i remember i just kind of give it yeah. a quick brush yeah uh Brian Barth it's he was kind of manipulated and plus he did a lot of films for his family to make money for his family and uh stuff like that so that's kind of what happened with the last couple of years and he had a set price and if you could hit set price he just did this did it fit in his yeah, schedule he would just do, do it. it yep pretty much and so <laughs> which is funny because you kind of think back now like with um uh expendables three when they replaced him with harrison ford because they kind of got a he had a falling out a little bit of sly in them well and that's what i guess the issue was is his asking price was a million per movie yeah that was he wanted that, yeah and i'm wondering if they even talked to each other because i bet if they had talked to each other but a different story i wonder if this wasn't a whole 
that's what I was thinking. Agent myself, talk to an agent, and you know the the deal is this. And, yeah, because yeah. so. that's what I think of because when they found out he uh slide still and released that big you know like a thing about talking about Persuela, so that made me to think that maybe he didn't know back in the day, like you said. I don't think he actually knew, so it was interesting. Uh, but no, I. Is it, for that looks like a pretty cool still book. So I guess for that price, that'd be pretty good, especially if you like those movies, if you don't own them on Blu-ray already. Yeah. It's some of the last really good Bruce Willis films. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the plot uh, for those who don't know is uh, Bruce Willis and John Malkovich and uh, uh, Midnight's Edge's very own uh, Dame Helen Mirren pl uh, play uh, deactivated CIA agents who are considered retired um, but extremely dangerous. So that's why I think it's a name yeah. red. Yeah. And the movie starts out like uh, somebody goes in to try and kill Bruce Willis and they find out that there's this list of people uh, and includes him and a bunch of his partners and stuff from back in the day. And, uh, and then they also run into a Russian guy who they all knew played by Brian Cox, who they get some help from and stuff like that. And it's just a really excellent, uh, and, Oh, Morgan Freeman. Did I mention Morgan Freeman? No, I don't think you did. But I forgot, yeah, Morgan I Freeman, yeah. I forgot he was in it myself. Yeah, and, and Morgan Freeman, yeah. I mean, uh, who's great Freeman. in it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I mean, it is. It's kind of like The Expendables, but uh, this is possibly another reason why Bruce wasn't too keen on The Expendables because he already kind of had his own with Red. Yeah, with Red, Red yeah. 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 That's kind of what it is. It's kind of these old guys who can still kick ass. And uh, yeah, then the second film picks up uh, after the first film without giving too much away and it's just uh it also has uh, uh what's her face the chick from weeds oh yeah uh, uh, i want to say marry something uh yeah uh da, 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 da. mary louise parker mary and louise she's kind of like the the love interest for bruce willis it kind of sets everything off and then um she returns in the second one of course then you add Catherine zena jones and brian hong lee mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff and neil mcdonough who is actually pretty good um, oh, and I forgot, of course, in the first one you had uh, also uh, uh, Bones, uh, what's his face, Carl Urban. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 He's kind of the main CIA guy. And as you pointed out before, Richard Dreyfus in the first one as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, great cast in both, one of, both of them. Um, and, of course, you know, uh, probably the one who steals the show the most would have to be John Malkovich and his crazy ass character. Oh, He's yeah. I right. he was in that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I get to bring the pig. <laughs> <laughs> get the pig. And Anthony Hopkins. Are you trying to kill me? Because the last time I saw you, I tried to kill you. <laughs> yeah, Anthony Hopkins is the bad guy in the second one. Yep. Oh, so he's in the second one. Okay. I was going to say, I don't remember him in the first movie. That's why I was thinking, what? <laughs> yeah, he plays kind of like this uh, kind of mix between Oppenheimer and, uh, you know, some kind of British scientist who's kind of wackadoo. <laughs> nice uh i haven't seen those movies like i said i've never seen the second one but i haven't seen the first one in forever i remember it being all right <laughs> had a good time with it he's a little yeah. crazy he spent a lot of years running around with this idea that the cia was dosing him with lsd he was right <laughs> <laughs> yeah Yes, Brian Barth. His condition is no is no longer manageable. He can't do films anymore. He can't even speak anymore. So, and I believe they said Alzheimer's just started to set in. So, yeah, there was no way he can continue. It's like <laughs> start, he should start directing career. movies. Well, no, it's like yeah, a, severe, got a very aggressive, yeah. severe version of it to where, like, yeah, he's supposedly really in rough shape because of it. Yeah, I mean, health wise, I mean, like physically, he's okay, but like mentally, no. Yeah, he's just no, not, he just can't. Yeah. I was I was joking and saying that even if he was mentally damaged, he'd be a better director than a lot of other. Well, it was directors. so bad near the end there that he was still able to at least mimic things to where they would set him down and say, "Here's your scene," just and they, he would just say whatever's being said to him in the earpiece. Like I guess that's mm -hmm. how he had done his last, and that's kind of how it got he got busted or whatever you want to call it because people knew something was up, and for years people were saying, "Oh, he's just being lazy and not learning his lines." Yeah, because everybody knew about the little earpiece, I guess. Mm -hmm. But uh, so that his family had to come out and you know, kind of just got ahead, not out ahead of, but his had probably had had enough of. Yeah, uh, like he's not this type of person, guys. <laughs> I mean, he's, yeah. no, look, I'm not gonna do, look. He has a past. Mm -hmm. Back when he That's was true. actually in his own faculties, 
Bruce Willis was known to be one of the hardest fucking people to work with in Hollywood. Uh, and he had a major ego problem and there are lots of horror stories about working with the guy, <laughs> uh, prior to all this stuff. So like, I'm not going to sit there and give him a pass. Uh, but, uh, you know, now I will on certain things, but like then I'm, I'm still not going to like say, yeah, he was an asshole for a lot of time yeah. <laughs> yeah, the stories yeah. I've heard. So like, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean him and Sybil Shepard moonlighting. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of stories out there. A lot, a lot of stuff of there. Yeah. I mean, um, of course, if I'd probably be an asshole to Kevin Smith too. No, no I don't blame him. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the uh, other thing too: is nine times out of ten, it doesn't seem like you have a problem with Bruce if you're working with him. It's only if you're the director, if you're somebody yeah. who's in any kind of authority, that he really does not like like jive with you. It's really there's only been a few directors it feels like that I know of that he's worked with more than once, and it's very very few. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but uh, we do have a 499 super chat just for rookie here from Doug uh, 1985 Virginia loves horror. He says, "Why do I get the feeling that Rook is that one guy in the audience that laughs at Amy Schumer jokes?" Love you guys. God, I hope not. <laughs> hard, hard, Doug. Hard, hard. <laughs> Oh, that was a good one, Doug. I appreciate that. And you know what? Just for that, I'm gonna give you a little Joe Don. Somebody said, "Well, it's because kids won't watch Black and White." And you know what I say? Fuck them. They can't watch Black and White. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh but yeah there that's uh it's pretty good set though uh any, anything else you want to say about the the red movie and all that no i wish i'd watched more movies i wasn't feeling too hot so i didn't really get to i wasn't feeling good in the sense that i slept away most of the day yesterday <laughs> <laughs> and i didn't get my uh newer films this week i was hoping to get uh to, to talk about yeah that so. is true same with me yeah. i didn't get to get much watch this week uh and the two two films that I did order, they got both got delayed. Uh, and I did manage to get one of them today, but it, I didn't get a chance to watch it all the way through. So I'll talk. We'll probably talk more about that one with Tom well, next week. Well, <laughs> I I finished my project I've been working on for a while, at least the writing portion of it. So now I've got a lot more free time to watch movies, and I, I'm I'm gonna watch one of the movies after the show tonight. So awesome, got awesome. Of some, I'll, I'll actually uh, quite a few selections that I will have watched this you know next week I, I did watch godzilla x kong which eh, I'm, I'm one of those ones that's like half on that half, half like it half don't like it so mm -hmm. yeah. anyway. mm -hmm. I've, I've not seen it but i know my nephew my two little nephews my brother took my um oh uh, his sons they're one or two and three to go see godzilla x kong because they love They've watched like he make they make them watch those movies every day, and he said they were actually pretty darn good in the theater. They didn't cry. They only had to leave a couple times. Uh, and yeah, the pace is, watched it. the the pace keeps you engaged the whole time. I would. Say. I thought it was pretty good. I thought it addressed and kind of cleaned up all the problems that the previous films had, and uh, it was under two hours. Yeah. I mean, it's the kind You're of thing where stupid human shit. So yeah, but the stuff it's it's fine. Like it's hard. There's a lot of that I like about it. One, they look amazing. Like you know, Godzilla and Kong and the monsters. They look pretty good. Like they look good on the screen. The problem I have with this one is there's a lot of it on screen at once, moving around, and it just reminds me of Transformers when there's too much on screen. It just looks weird on screen to focus on it's like Sometimes, eh, it's but it's, i didn't feel like i was too yeah. overwhelmed by it but the, I the, yeah. then it's like you know you had the scar king and the his ape army of slaves just moving rocks not literally doing anything that meant anything it's, they just were there yeah, they are. he's what they're looking for an exit they're just moving rocks in a cave like they, yeah they're they, looking they for an exit like they're yeah, stuck I don't know. I feel like they could have been more. I feel like they could have been more attention. creative. Dude. <laughs> no, I'm saying they could have been more creative with their use of them. That was kind of well, like, yeah, listen, like Godzilla trapped them down there. How no, I heard that they're very ago. explicit with. That. So they're digging. That. And they're trying to dig their way out. Is what they're doing. So yeah, but but they have apes that they go on the surface themselves. They're not stuck in that cave. Well, they can get to the surface part, but they're still looking for ways out. Not so to like mention, not for... to mention the part that we're in the subterranean 
hollow earth <laughs> like it's in the like they're in the hollow earth and then the, oh we're going beneath the hollow earth and it's like that already is kind of a, a dumb concept to me it's like you're already in this i don't know why you need to just go for like you're going to go even more underground next time that's just kind of like even more dumb the the uh, just don't the, understand the the native child <laughs> they that they have with them, movies, the native so. child that they have with them is like the chosen one that was really like what, what was that necessary i don't know they bring uh, it's back a play life. on mothra thing yeah Mon- like whole... i don't know why that was in it's it's the kind of thing where it's like yeah I, if you're gonna say it's the, this type of movie yeah sure but like that's have you ever I'm seen saying. mothra before Yes, I have seen Mothra before. You do know that, like, there's these twins that mentally telepathically communicate with, <laughs> them, right? No, I, I, I've seen, I've seen the monster of Mothra in things. I no, don't know anything in the about old Toho. There's stuff. two little Chinese or Japanese twins that talk to Mothra. But, but you heard the dialogue of this specifically, right? They're like, specifically, a young girl will survive from the mm-hmm. Kong Island and she will do the thing. And like, out of that, it's like, no, nope, just and? you don't need to do all that. That That's ridiculous. You don't think that's any bit ridiculous? Like, no. <laughs> Not in the world of Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, if you've seen something I'm, I'm, like. I'm talking really about like, in the world of just uh, film in general. And, uh, no, and see, that's know. the problem with most people. They're judging this movie on the wrong. This is a Saturday morning cartoon. You got to throw all fucking logic out the window. Uh, yeah, but it's the kind of thing where I'm like, yeah, but there's a lot of Saturday morning cartoons that have good logic in them. <laughs> so I don't know. It's, uh, no, 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 no. You got to understand. They streamline the logic here. You have to understand. There's some bat shit, crazy shit that happens in the old Godzilla movies. No, I understand. I understand. This is tame. This is I, I get it. I get it. I get it. This get makes it. a lot more sense than some of the shit. I get, you know, on a level of, you know, it's fucking monkey versus lizard, dude. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you, you could use that. You can distill it's, that. Okay, the way you're coming off to me now is like the dude who was in my reviews going, I don't know what you're talking about. The special effects of this movie were shit. It's like, oh, yeah. The old special effects were great when it was a guy in a I fucking did. suit stomping on toys. Like, <laughs> I don't know how you, fuck, dude. Like, I complimented this, but I complimented the special effects. The, the special effects. No, I know. I'm just saying that's the like, way it's coming off. It's like, okay, I get it, dude. But you got to understand how crazy wacky this shit is, man. It's just. I, I guess I always see. I guess course. I guess I always see it as it, it can be wacky, but like, does it always have to be that degree of? I don't know. It, well, like, that's it, what they're emulating is the old godzilla stuff man i mean i yeah. I, mean, I guess if you get it and it's your thing and the funny thing is is Criticalist point posted three different reviews of the film mine being one of them savvy and alan ings being the other two and we all three said the same fucking thing about the movie the only difference is, is how we felt about it basically <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Well, I, I can see it being like a fun movie, but it's it's not like the one where, with me where I'm like I'm really getting substance out of it. It's I don't know. Like I feel like, but you know, uh, and that's but I fair, like you, dude. I feel like you that's can totally with, fair though. But I don't know what you were walking in expecting, and I think that's the biggest problem is people are walking in with the expectations like Godzilla minus one or something. I don't understand. No, I I, I go in with with no expectation with with these. If or if, or if anything, I guess like the first movie in the franchise of the 2014 godzilla or something oh that's your problem they moved away from that a long See, time. yeah that's the thing that's is they a, realized i feel like that quick. was a pretty decent approach well what, what did you just hear I greg think. say greg just said was it was your cousin or your my my whatever. brother took his two sons brother your brother sorry yeah. took yeah. his two young young kids and they're like two, two and three, three and four two and two three and, three. and they jesus christ still. there you go that's the whole thing I mean, they realized but, after 2014 <laughs> that they hid godzilla through the whole movie they made it, tried to go super serious, and it didn't work. And then when Godzilla, King of the Monsters, they they adjusted it. They readjusted that movie, but the movie suffered at the box office because of the first film, because of the reaction people had. But what they noticed is that kids were buying toys. So they're like, oh, shit, we got, we're not aiming this towards the right crowd here. I don't know if you can and they see quickly, it. Yeah, they quickly figured out real, real fast, th- there you go. See, that the biggest awesome. audience for these movies now is these kids, especially the MonsterVerse ones. And that's why, you know, everything since then, I mean, Kong actually was the point where they kind of, I think they figured it out. And that's why Godzilla, you know, King of Monsters, they kind of adjusted things. And then 
got even more and more and more. Did they, like, did they not the, like Kong or, or was that? People was that liked Kong, right? but it, Kong was, here's the thing. Kong was more in line with what we're getting now, right? Like this is more or less a Kong series. Like, well, yeah, this point, I actually, so I, I like that aspect of this, actually. I, I feel like Kong can be a main the protagonist essentially he's the main guy that we're following well and he's more the, emotional right he's like more emotional. I mean, he's, he's closest to a human without needing to speak verbally and i think that that's fine and, honestly, and to me that's where this movie shines on a cinematic level is you got like 20 minutes of the movie where there's no dialogue and it's all through kong's perspective no, I, I agree that's the part i like the that's the kind of thing i like the most with it is the parts where you're focusing on that so if you take that level though and it, I feel like you can add to that still and have it be entertaining for kids. They get it without having as much of the like, okay, maybe it's, maybe I'm more combining it with the Godzilla vs Kong and King of the monsters. I, those ones, I feel like we're, I feel like this one's not as bad as those. Oh, this I agree. Uh, this they one is like fixed uh, all the problems I had with those earlier films, but yeah. it's like, but it's uh man. I'd have to rewatch it again to really go through everything because there's some things I like about it, but there's other things where I'm like, why was there even the, you know, it's just one of those things uh, that I think if we're trying to make it the best of all worlds here with it, I feel like that you can come, you can come to a conclusion that fits that audience that they're aiming for and get people that usually would snuff their face. See, you would like Monarch. See, that's the thing. Monarch is a series made for adults. And that kind yes, of yes. explores it's like, more I'm watching of the Breaking Bad and stuff right things. now. I, I'm in that. Yeah, zone, no, you're not. So yeah, like, you're way off. I don't know. Of that. that might be. And where I wouldn't I'm even be. A movie and that's fair too. Movie and movie I, I and like I said, most people are just they're kind of just rating it more so on what they feel about it overall. Like to me, yeah, I felt like awesome. I was an eight year old kid again. Like that's what I was saying. It's like if this movie came out when I was eight, this would be my new favorite movie. Like right. everything would be yeah. this. Fuck everything else in my world. This movie oh, no, is agree. everything no, I want I, I at this agree. moment in time. If I thought <laughs> like, I was younger, it, it, it knows its it, audience. And if we can enjoy it, cool. We yeah. got Godzilla minus one otherwise. So, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Brian Borth, I think the thing with the, uh, like focusing on Godzilla, they did two Godzilla movies. And then they only did yeah. one Kong movie. So it kind of, they're making up with You Kong. get some great moments in this too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but no, I get where you guys come from. Um, so uh, Jay, anything else you want me to move on to my final pick it does feel like it's becoming a power ranger type of universe though so maybe i'll like oh yeah i can't disagree with the whole so, transformers so that's thing all right. it's the new transformers it's the new marvel thing with kids now I'd say right it's a like, better tra- it's, it's a better transform oh I'll by far that. i'll, I'll say <laughs> that. Like, again don't get me wrong i'm not sure at least every film. movie isn't the same goddamn thing over and over again no, like i agree too these are very distinctive okay which other. transformer movie good, is this we learned something from the past there's a new object <laughs> yeah, everyone that the bad guys get their hands on and the good yeah. guys got to stop them from using it which one is it <laughs> it's everyone <laughs> exactly you're right no matter which one you say <laughs> <laughs> exactly no the, the godzilla franchise is is a much it's much better than that it's like a very it's an improved type of transformers franchise i would say yeah doing it right so yeah you can go on to your pick uh, all right I, this sorry, is my uh for the derail but we did a pretty short show today that we're barely over an no, hour it so, gives us a little something to talk about so yeah. uh hell edwin ace What's glad up, to ace? have you with us and i right. uh, wanted to say good night to you phoenix uh, night 08 thank you for sticking with us but yeah. um i don't know we may me and tom may be able to talk a little bit about this one and you too rook uh but after i watched uh the room last week uh i had to i had to watch this so i watched the disaster artist i got the disaster artist here oh, nice and uh uh i absolutely loved this movie this was a great movie even seth rogan didn't even run it for me <laughs> luckily he's not in it as a lot but um tom i did kind of did what you said i watched the movie first and then i started listening to the audiobook and the audiobook is so freaking good told you look in general and like they really did leave out a whole bunch like they left out the and, whole thing with don and mark replacing yeah. don or greg replacing don in the movie that would have been amazing to see in the movie so and that's where i wanted you to see the movie first so you didn't prejudge the movie because i wanted to see how you reacted because i liked the movie but i'm like i would have loved this had i seen it before i heard the book yeah. on tape because like yeah once you once you've heard the book on tape you go into that movie you're like 
well, where's this? Exactly. Well, where's that? Well, yeah. how did they jump over? Th- how can you get to? No, well, you can't leave that yeah. out. Like, you know, like- <laughs> but since like after watching it, I really, I really enjoyed the movie. I couldn't believe how much I actually enjoyed the movie. It is really, I could, I was blown away how they recreated the room, like the scenes they show. Like, I was blown away how well they actually recreated how bad the movie was. But I loved the movie. I loved the room. It was great. It, well, it's a bad movie, but it's it's great. It's a great um, bad movie. <laughs> yeah, but uh, th- this James Franco loses himself. You don't even, that's Tommy Wiseau. You're watching, it's like, that is a great acting performance because you do not see James Franco in this movie. You see Tommy Wiseau in this movie. Um, it's just so fascinating. And then like, like I've been listening to the audio book um, halfway through it. I haven't finished it all, but like you hear some of the other, like the, the details that Greg Sestero tells about him and Tommy and how they get to hear from A to B and some of the stuff that went on. Cause there's a lot, a lot of stuff like since you're like start listening to the book you hear right away a lot of the stuff that was left out they definitely streamlined the movie uh to make it you know to get to where they needed to be but uh, ruck if you've i know you've seen the room if you've never seen the disaster artist you need to see this movie this is a fun great movie uh it's a little heartbreaking as well it's a little sad and uh, i think tommy Uso is a vampire i think he's a real life vampire <laughs> I really, yeah, really one of, these, one of these days since Justin Proper got me to see the room. One of these days when I can, I'll try to link up with him and watch the Disaster Artist as well. I've uh, I've become fascinated with the story of this man. I'll be straight honest with you. I've become fascinated, and I am listening to this book, and I'm trying to decide on who this guy really is because he does make jokes about being a vampire. As Greg, he was an enigma night. wrapped inside of a mystery, wrapped I, inside of a like a nut bar. <laughs> uh, the, the Ace, if you listen to the audiobook uh, or the read the book, as I, I plan on actually getting a copy of the book now, um, you will understand why I think he's a vampire because he even makes jokes about being it. Because to this day, I mean, there's theories and people have sort of try to prove its things and maybe it hasn't been fully proven but nobody really still knows quite where they, he's they from. might have they might have thrown holy water on him once or twice and he <laughs> reacted oddly there nobody really quite knows where he's from uh nobody really knows how he got into his money there's theories and stuff that's been said that maybe can be proven true but they haven't really proven it true um he tends to sleep all day long till about noon and he wakes up and he does they, they like Greg in the book says he doesn't even go to bed till like six in the morning. And uh, so like even when like when they play soccer for the first time in the book, he he, uh, he tells Greg, he's like, mm, it's such a beautiful day for a vampire out here. <laughs> so like, he makes jokes about himself Wink. being a vampire. <laughs> I mean, this guy is just an amazing character study. And uh, I'm uh, kind of interested to see the movie Best Friends. Has anybody seen the movie Best Friends? Because I'm kind of interested to see that. I may end up buying that because I want to see that movie now. Um, it's the second movie they did together, uh, so I'm I'm kind of interested into that. But I heard um, the, the best fiends one or whatever, best friends one. I heard yeah. that one wasn't so good, but I really want to see the shark one he's been working on. Yeah, I've heard the shark movie. That yeah, I want to see that one too. Uh, but I want to see best friends now too. But it's it's just like the disaster artist uh, fascinated me, even with some of the people in Hollywood nowadays that I can't stand, like Seth Rogen and stuff. Um, it's really just like this really solid movie, and I really enjoyed the uh, the chemistry between James Franco and his brother. And it's, it, what's really funny about this is as well, too, because Tommy Wiseau actually said, uh, well, at least they say that's what he said in the special features is that he either wanted Johnny Depp or James Franco to play him in a movie. So James Franco plays him in the movie and he gets lost in it. And what's funny is because James Franco, when his big claim to becoming really famous was he did a James Dean movie, TV movie. And I think he wanted like a, a, a an Emmy or something for that. And like uh, Tommy Wiseau and them are fascinated with James Dean. So there's a lot of that connection between the actual uh, the, the Tommy and James Franco. And I kind of feel like James Franco was kind of betrayed by a lot of his friends himself in real life because that's what Tommy Wiseau was kind of felt like he was betrayed. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, but it's a, it's just a really fun movie, and he's a fascinating, fascinating character. And it's just like I love the scene in the movie when they get to the him them filming the sex scene and how uh, he just like loses his shit 
in the movie because he's like, his my ass must be shown. I need my ass. I can't do the Tommy voice, but he's like, I need my ass shown. And he he goes up too high and he's like, does he knows where the vagina is, right? And he's up by her belly button. And he like he makes this he says these horrible things to this girl, talking about how she's ugly, she's got a zit on her, that she needs to be Hollywood beautiful. And it's just like the way he gets into a fight with everybody on the crew. Uh, it's just, it's, it's great. <laughs> it's, it's, shut up, Jeremy. I say fascinating because he truly is a fascinating character study. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm into it. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, take for instance, what did they cut out from the audiobook? Like, the movie presents that Tommy wrote The Room as for Greg. Like, he wrote it, uh, like, I made the movie for you, and I want you to play Mark. And Greg immediately says, yes, I'll play Mark. And no, uh, Tommy actually wrote the as a play, stage play first, the movie The Room as, as a stage play first. And then it became a movie. And Mark, or Greg, I keep wanting to say Mark because that's who he plays, but Greg Sestero, who plays Mark, uh, he told Tommy, no, he would not go to play. Because he, he, after he read it, he knew the movie stunk, and he didn't want to be connected to it but he agreed to be the line producer. And uh, they actually cast somebody completely different to play Mark and uh, the Lisa as well. And they had contracts, everything. And then Tommy didn't like him. He didn't like him at all. So he basically conned Greg into playing Mark by offering him a lot of money and a new car. And what he did well, in the movie was like, he told the crew and them that, and Don, the guy, well, his name actually wasn't Don, it was Dan something, but then Tommy called him Don. So everybody else had to call him Don. Uh, he told him and everybody that the producers want to see Greg in the movie to, for a role. There are no fucking producers. It's just Tommy. Tommy's the only man, that, you know, he's financing the whole movie. <laughs> so like they started making Greg do the scenes for Mark and filming it. And, and then when Don would do his scenes, they wouldn't film him. There would be no film in it and stuff, and they wouldn't actually film him. So he like kind of just till it got to the point where he had to say, "Yeah, you guys are fired. Come back and collect your check, and don't come back." Mark Greg's going to play Mark from now on. <laughs> so <laughs> that's that's left out of the movie. All of that is left out of the movie. Uh, and he, he actually fired multiple film crews. Where in the movie he only fires one. He fires like two people, but he fired like three or four film crews uh, before the movie was finished. So there's a lot left out of the movie <laughs> that they don't put in, but the movie is really, really good. It's a, I, I really enjoyed it. I can't believe how well I actually liked the movie. Uh, I highly recommend you see it, Rook, especially if you're a fan of the room. <laughs> if I shall, I shall. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I think about this now, especially after re learning a little more, reading the book and watching the movie. Um, maybe Tommy was competent. You know, I mean, yes, the movie's trash, and maybe he didn't know what he was doing, but maybe he did know what he was doing. You know what I mean? Like maybe he was so as far ahead. I doubt it. But it's like you he, to, he's just he's just drunk directing. There's he's parts a, of you that think when you're hearing about his life and stuff that maybe he was just, maybe he knew what he was doing. Like, 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 maybe. like the martial arts of a drunken <laughs> fist, he's doing drunken directing or something. He's. He's yeah. acting like he don't get it, but he gets yes. it more than anybody. Yes. And yes, speaking of which, over on Ron Shear's channel tomorrow during the social hour, I my video will be up during it. Uh, I, I will talk about the room. And then followed by that, there is an interview with Greg Sestero that they have that will play after my after I review the movie, talk about the movie or whatever. So if you guys want to see that tomorrow over on Ron's channel, you can do that. Big um, shot. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> uh, but yes, I highly, highly recommend. If you've never seen The Room, watch The Room. I recommend The Disaster Artist, and I do recommend The Disaster Artist book. Uh, I, I, I think the story of these two men, uh, Tommy and Wusso and Greg Estero, is a story of these because they become best friends. Tommy calls him his best friend. He calls him the best friend in The Disaster Artist. Uh, it's behind the scenes special features. Um, but it's the story of these two men. I think one was Greg. He was this all American suburban kid who wanted, he just really wanted to be an actor and he never really got support from anybody, not his mom, not his dad. They kind of just like rolled his eyes at him. Like, yeah, everybody wants to be an actor and everything. Yeah. Right. And then Tommy, I think was this guy that most people just made fun of and overlooked and never really gave two, two cents about thought he was weird. And, uh, they kind of found each other 
And uh, I think Greg was the first person to actually be legitimately nice and kind and offer friendship to Tommy. And, uh, and put up with his shit. And yeah, put up with his shit because he's he's very <laughs> weird and demanding. Like he walks into a restaurant, he doesn't wait. He demands See, hot water. That's the thing that's <laughs> about him is like you're getting into the book and you finally realize kind of, and I don't remember if um, Greg admits it or not, but you, I remember getting the impression because it's been like three, four years since I've read the yeah, book yeah. Or, or whatever. You kind of get the impression that Greg was just kind of bored. Mm-hmm. Like he just had nothing better to do because he just wanted to be an actor, but work wasn't coming. Mm-hmm. And he's kind of like, well, this guy is weird. Let's see what happens next. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> you know it, you're kind of just wrapped up in his world. Mm-hmm. Right. And and Greg, you're right. Like, we're just, and not only that, he genuinely liked Greg or whatever it was. And not only yeah. in any kind of sexual, weird, perverted way. Yeah. It was no. just, a, you know, it was just that the, he, he, like you said, he was just genuinely nice to him. And I'm sure a lot of people treated him like shit after a while, mm-hmm. you know, especially or just didn't take him seriously at all, you know, because of how he sounded or walked and talked and all that kind of shit. But mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, they kind of found each other and, uh, the, you know, he kind of just got really, like, like Tommy says, he wants his own planet and Greg got sort of wrapped up in Tommy's planet. <laughs> so that's what happened. And, uh, sh- screw you, Jeremy. I would say it's fascinating. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> but no, it, it is. And I just, I love the fact that he's like, don't talk about me. Don't talk about what I drive, where I live. Don't talk about me to anybody. <laughs> That's what Tommy told him. He's like, don't tell anybody about me. Don't say where I live, what I drive, how much, where, where I'm going and all this. <laughs> he tells him that right off the bat when they takes him to his house. And so it's, it's, it's pretty fun. It's a, it's an interesting. And I think and that Tommy awesome. does that just to build an air of mystery, to be mm-hmm. honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. And so. I mean, in simple the- terms, I mean. Sorry, I had a mouthful of food. No, go, yeah. <laughs> he kind of, there is that chapter in there in the book. And I wish they had found a way to translate this into the movie. But um, in the book, there's this chapter where it's like, and I think this is kind of what you were referencing, Greg, mm-hmm. where it's like, you can't prove it, but let's just say there was this kid who came from, I can't remember what country, Scandinavian country or whatever it Something was that like he said. That, yeah. Yeah, I come from exiled because of whatever and he come up with this crazy story you know and it, honestly i think that whole chapter is tommy's story mm-hmm. i'm pretty sure that's tommy's story just the way he worded it was the only way tommy would allow him to tell it because i think yeah tommy wants you to talk about him mm-hmm. he wants that air of mystery though too yep. he likes that aspect of it he does he he fancies himself this movie star in his own brain Yes. Yes, he <laughs> or does. Rock star or whatever you want to call <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Like you go to that chapter. I think that's Tommy's story. I think that's pretty accurate as to what happened to him and how he got to where he is and and all that shit. So yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's like the point where in the the book where Greg really realizes that you know like he's friends with this guy and that you know like he's really starting to like Tommy is when they go visit Jane Dean James Dean's great uh site where he crashed. And they're driving back, and Tommy tells him the story about a couple car crashes that he got into because he says, "I have my own James Dean story," and he said that that's really when he felt like whether those stories were completely accurate or not. That's when he felt like Tommy really opened up to him and was telling him some truth to himself. Well, it also helped was. understand about maybe where he got some of the money, mm-hmm. to begin yeah. with, and then other yep. things like yeah. So I mean, it, yeah. it, you know, it's all kind of there in in the book. And that's why I, say, I recommend the book highly, but uh, yeah, no, it's a, it's a great story about just friendship. I think at the end of the day too, yeah. because I mean, you can read into it, whatever you want. And there was always, always kind of weird rumors about him and whatnot. But at the end of the day, I think it's pretty obvious that, like I said, Greg was just this young guy trying to be an actor mm-hmm. and he met this weird dude. <laughs> and, and he, he took him on a ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 He didn't try to fuck him or anything. He just, you know, you know, so like, which is a typical thing in Hollywood. I'm sure at that point, Greg's like, finally, a guy who just didn't try to fuck me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I, I think they kind of sort of hit a little bit that in the disaster artist, but I never really got that. And I think, um, you know, I think it was smart because James Franco and Dave Franco are brothers and they're playing these two guys. And I well, really think that's what it boils down to is they became like brothers. There was this thing. I think it's addressed in the book too. Maybe you just haven't got that far yeah, yet. Yeah, I haven't got that just far. Just kind of blown over. Through. 
like the, the his mom does have kind of like this weird thing where she does kind of bring it up like she doesn't feel like something's right about it but after a while she just kind of comes around and realizes that tommy's just this fucking weird old guy <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh okay it was from poland yeah and that's what i think it says in the book too basically yeah yeah i mean we still don't know exactly where in poland and everything like that uh because he's still there's he still a lot about him trouble or something like that yeah and then uh he came over here and yeah <laughs> he's from new orleans he's from the bayou don't you know that <laughs> That's I'm a ninja from, the- from New York. Uh, <laughs> and you're right. Uh, that Greg does does a really great impression of him in the in the audiobook. He it sounds a lot like him when he you talks. Can like him. Listen to him a lot. Yeah, yeah, you can tell. And I I truly believe that James Franco is like embodied him. I know people give James Franco crap, and I know he had some trouble and everything, which I don't think those are ever actually proven true. And and some of them. And it, 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 it's kind of like a similar situation where like some of the people that worked on this movie that were so-called friends of James Franco uh, turned on him. So <laughs> I can kind of see how it all works together in their favor, uh, how it all blends. But yeah, I would definitely check out the disaster artist, the movie, and I would read the book. Now I, I would say do what Tom says. If you haven't read the book, watch the movie first, because it'll probably make it for a more enjoyable movie. Then read the book. Because once you hear some of the stuff in the book and what they left out, it might change how you feel about the movie if you read it and then watch it. So watch the movie first, I would say. Uh, yeah. 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 Seth Rogen abandoned him because he went. He's a douchebag. I, I cannot stand Seth Rogen. He's a douchebag and a half. Uh, yeah. He abandoned a lot of his friends that he so-called did all the or worked with all those movies with and everything. And then, oh, no, I was never really friends with those guys, even though we. Work together for like 20 years. He probably has more skeletons in his closet than all of them. Oh, guaranteed. But he sucks to write, you know. So. <laughs> no, you sucks don't want to write okay. popsicles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sucks to write popsicles in the business. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there you guys have it. That was a, I had to watch that. I, and I was happy I got the slipcase because I it's been out for a long time and I didn't yeah. think I was going to get the slipcase with this. So I know some people don't like that, but I like having a slipcase. I mean, it was, you know, and that's a weird <laughs> one stuck in a. It's got a digital version in 4K, but for some reason, it never got a 4K Blu-ray. I don't think. But yeah, yeah. It might have something to do with Franco's problems. So you never know. Um, well, it's speaking. No, of I which, just don't. I, I it was just at that, that weird period where things weren't quite. They're still switching over yet. Yeah. And yeah, but it also I mean, go ahead. I've seen it in digital in 4K, but I don't yeah. think it ever got a 4K Blu-ray. Well, the thing with this is like it's got four different studios with it. It's got New Line Cinema, Warner Brothers, Lionsgate, and A24. So <laughs> who knows? <laughs> you know, well, how New Line it, and Warner are the same damn. Yeah, company. New Line and Warner are the same. Yeah, it was by the same people there, but it's also Lionsgate and A24 are involved on this. So uh, I think it was what I read was like Warner Brothers owns the worldwide distributing, and then Lionsgate and A24 own the domestic. So That's something like probable. that. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, kind of. You know, I always liked James Franco. I always thought he was. A pretty good actor. I think he kind of got pulled into those Seth Rogen comedies and stuff where he should have stuck where he was, you know, like with the James Dean and those weird roles that he would get before that. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so he he actually directed this. Had this had an no, I never had an issue with him. I always liked him. And I think his brother did. It was weird. Is it like I'm watching this movie and I'm really feeling more James Franco from his brother. Than I am from him, you know what I mean. His brother feels more like James Franco than he does, and uh, he kind of he kind of gets Greg down after listening to hearing Greg talk and seeing interviews. Uh, he kind of gets Greg, but uh, Franco definitely got Wasso. And the scene between him and Tommy at the end credits, where they're talking to each other, my God, is that a magnificent scene? <laughs> I love it. it is so good. It is so good, and it's hilarious. He's like. That accent sounds familiar. You from New Orleans? Yeah, I'm from New Orleans. <laughs> I love it. That's so good. Oh, but anyways, I probably went on about this too long. But I was just—I've become really interested in this, and uh, I—I will probably—I will probably watch Best Friends. Uh, I, like you, Tom, you heard. I've heard it wasn't as good as those, but I will probably watch it. And I do want to see the shark movie that he's making. Uh, I don't know if that is that one available yet uh, at all. 
No, I think he's only had a couple of screenings of it. I, I um, trying to remember. I know I heard somebody talking about it that saw it, but uh, I can't remember who it was. But yeah. Yeah. So I, 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 I hope he get to, gets that out eventually, so I can see that as well. But uh, there you guys go. Yeah. Wasn't it Runner who saw that? I think Runner did. Yeah. I think he he met him. He yeah, met yeah, him. Yeah. Runner who saw it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's. Uh, I, I don't know what I would do if I ever met that man. He's. He's definitely something else. <laughs> and I love the fact that like they don't know how old he is. He's uh, clearly had plastic surgery on his face. Uh, he keeps his hair dyed. He loves to work out because he wants to have that body of like a uh, 20 year old. So people don't know his age as well. He's just like this, this enigma man. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, if you guys got anything else you want to say before we close that, because I, mean, I know we got um, uh, that uh, we're pretty much done. I, I'm sorry for everybody out there in the chat and watching at home that we don't have more. Um, like I said, Tom was sick. My two movies got delayed. Uh, they were supposed to be here yesterday. One came late today, and the other one has been delayed till tomorrow. So I would have had more then. Uh, so yeah. How much but, are you planning on for next week? How many movies, maybe? It's whatever I get to watch. <laughs> you, I like to try for three. I like to try for three personally. But if I get more in, I get more in. So, I see. I'm gonna try for more than three this time. Go ahead to do it. It'd be fine. It'd be interesting to finally see rookie know, have more than movies. two movies or a movie <laughs> i haven't seen this movie before but what do you guys think about it <laughs> <laughs> i figured i'd do the confusion arc is what i'm calling it uh, this last couple of episodes the confusion arc what what is rookie even seen anymore he's been on the show for like 40 episodes and now suddenly he's like not watching what and then <laughs> and then he comes back and then it's like all right well what, what direction is he going in now <laughs> It was crazy. But thank you, Tom. Thank you, Rogue, for uh, coming uh, here as always and being my co-host. And to everybody out in the chat, I appreciate you guys for sticking with us, hanging in chat. Your comments are always appreciated. And, and yes, uh, before I go, like I told uh, Nerd Corial on his channel and on here, um, a comment and a like goes a very long way on a video. Comment, like, and watching the video goes a long way. Yeah, it's awesome if you join and become a channel member, which I would love that. It's awesome if you buy a t-shirt or something from me. But uh, watching the video, leaving a comment, a like, that's what it's really all about. So uh, having me on and saying crazy takes will give D Doug will give you like 50 bucks. So that's <laughs> <fine>. <laughs> and I do appreciate your super chats, Doug. I really I really appreciate that. But as always. Thank you guys for hanging with us and watching the show and having a good time. I hope we provided some laughs and some entertainment. But as always, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. How you doing? Uh, 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 bitches leave. Uh.